52.92, a new high school national record. Back to back to back to back state champions. NET Sports, Nebraska's home for championship sports, is live from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska for the 2016 NSAA State High School Football Championships. And this afternoon in Class C-1, a state championship showdown between the Cavaliers of Bishop Newman and the undefeated O'Neill Eagles. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with David Binning. Have another terrific one here in Class C-1. We've already crowned one champion today. This will be our second. And Noah Vedrill, what an outstanding quarterback he is for Bishop Newman. Yeah, he's the, he's the guy that makes it go. He's a tremendous athlete. He can run it. He can throw it. He's adept on defense as well. But perhaps his best quality is the one you can't see. It's his leadership. He's been there, done that. He's a gamer. Over 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns. They call him Sticks, affectionately known as number 11. What do you like about Bailey Thompson of O'Neill? Well, he does it all. And uh, he's a tremendous wrestler, state champion wrestler. Tough kid. Carries the load for him, plays good defense on the outside in that 335 defense. And it's his birthday. So yeah. let's see if his team can give him a gift known as the state championship. Let's go down to the field, the third member of our broadcast crew, Sean Callahan. Sean. Well, guys, a lot of families will celebrate Thanksgiving here on Thursday. Well, the Terman family is going to get together a little bit earlier here in Memorial Stadium as they're going to try to celebrate potentially two state championships today. First, father Tim Terman will coach Wahoo Bishop Newman and his two grandsons, by the way, Noah and Eli Vedrill are on this team. And his son-in-law, uh, Mike Vedrill, is the receivers coach, also a former Husker. And then later tonight in our evening game, uh, Coach Terman will get to watch his son, Matt, coach Omaha Scott to go for another state championship day. So needless to say, a pretty special day here in Memorial Stadium for the Terman family. Thanks very much, Sean. Should be a good one today. It's the Federals will be out in force for both games, I'm sure. And I want to remind you to watch NET Sports anytime, anywhere. Download the free NET Nebraska app today. You can watch college player profiles. Full-length episodes from Big Red Wrap-Up, live web streams. There's so much more. Search for NET Nebraska in the App Store or download it free at netnebraska.org slash apps. So a 12-0 Eagles team taking on an 11-1 Bishop Newman Cavaliers. A chilly afternoon here at Memorial Stadium, but a great late November day for football. Take a look at the schedules of these two teams and see how they arrived here today. The Cavaliers 11-1, their only loss coming against inter, uh, inter city opponent Wahoo. 21 to nothing was the loss. They rebounded from that to win convincingly three playoff games. The last regular season game against Wahoo was the loss of their 11 and one coming in. How about O'Neill? Well, the Eagles are 12 and 0 overall, and Madison was a one zip forfeit. They're averaging 36 points a game, giving up just over 11 points per game. Yeah, they've been able to do it with defense. Both uh, programs have some signature wins over some perennial powers, as you've seen Bishop Newman beat Kearney Catholic yeah. uh, en route here, and O'Neill beats David City Aquinas. How about that, Aquinas uh, Catholic? So, so two storied programs, yeah. both knocked off by both, our two, both uh, combatants here today. Yeah, O'Neill has certainly been battle tested. They've played that tough Northeast Nebraska schedule and, you know, gone elsewhere as well. They've beat Norfolk Catholic, which is a perennial power, 26-21, knocked off Pierce, which has a, a great tradition of football. And then that battle you talked about, the, the one with David City, Aquinas, Aquinas Catholic, beat them 15-12 to to continue in the playoffs and make it here to Memorial Stadium. So, so far we've had uh, four games already played here at the state championships, three yesterday. We've played one today, this and one more to go tonight, the Terman Bowl, this afternoon and tonight. Class D2 yesterday, it was Falls City Sacred Heart knocking off Twin Loop 44 to 28. Burwell took a 20 to nothing lead over Gack and never looked back, won that one 47 to 18. Last night, a terrific evening from Jalen Bradley who rushed for better than 
250 yards, put up 50 rushing total touchdowns on the year, 24 in the playoffs. Remarkable performances. Bellevue West knocked off Omaha North, and then just moments ago, it was a shutout. Once again, the eighth shutout of the year for Wilbur Claytonia as they beat Crofton 20 to nothing, pitching the shutout in the state championship game. Time now for introductions. Let's go to our public address announcer. Here's Doc Weininger. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Memorial Stadium at the 2016 Nebraska School Activities Association Football Championship Finals for this afternoon's contest between the Cavaliers of Bishop Newman and the Eagles of O'Neill. And now, here are the team introductions of the players and coaches. We begin with the Cavaliers of Bishop Newman. Number one, Ryan Daly. Number seven, Eli Vedral. Number eight, Pete Burke. Number nine, Jackson Simons. Number 11, Noah Vedral. Number 15, Frey Ahrens. Number 20, Trevin Rezach. Number 21, Zach Minna. Number 22, Thomas Lilly. Number 23, Tommy Benish. Number 25, Reed Jurgensmeyer. Number 30, Theo Bloom. Number 43, Patrick Taverdi. Number 48, Blake Hannon. Number 50, Caleb Benish. Number 53, Caden Johnson. Number 54, Nate Kanetsky. Number 58, Nick Zalotchek. Number 60, Nathan Paisley. Number 66, Evan Welsh. Number 72, Andrew Clement. Number 78, Austin Fessler. The head coach for Bishop Newman, Tim Terman. And the rest of the Cavaliers. So here come the Cavaliers, 11 and one of the year. Head coach Tim Turman, he's been around a while at Bishop Newman, 36 years on the bench with the Cavaliers, a career record of 266 and 115. Here's a look at these two teams, points per game, not too dissimilar, points allowed, very similar, yards per game, yards allowed, and takeaways, fairly even up and down the comparison chart. Yeah, Bishop Newman, again, one of the storied programs. It, it starts and ends with Bedrill at the quarterback spot. A lot of athleticism, but maybe in a surprise to those that may be tuning in for the first time seeing O'Neill, they may be able to match them when it comes yeah. to athleticism on the outside. And let's not forget, no love loss here between these two teams as they were combatants in the state, state finals, finals as well. And we'll see an offensive and defensive line matchup we'll talk about earlier. Yeah. That was a, a finals matchup in wrestling at 220 pounds. Let's go back to Rich Broderson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Eagles of O'Neill. Number three, Alex Tramer. Number four, Bryce Heiser. Number eight, Wyatt Lever. Number nine, Jake Young. Number 10, Justin Appleby. Number 11, 
Corbin Dean. Number 13, Kobe Todd. Number 21, Johnson Windsor. Number 22, Bailey Thompson. Number 25, Shane Campbell. Number 28, Spencer Davis. Number 31, Trevor Dempster. Number 32, Ty Hilker. Number 50, Catch Scholes. Number 51, Brandon Hobson. Number 52, Hayden Strope. Number 54, Jason Halbeck. Number 56, Parker Belgum. Number 67, Tyler Reagan. Number 76, Devin Fritz. The head coach for O'Neill, Brock Eichelberger. And the rest of the Eagles. Well, here we go. Eagles at 12 and 0, looking for a C1 state championship. The showdown between the Eagles and Newman for the C1 title. Here's a look at where the two teams come from: O'Neill and the northeastern part of the state. Bishop Newman in Wahoo. How do they get here to Lincoln? Let's take a look at the bracket and show you the wins in the quarter and semifinals. It was Bishop Newman over Ogallala, and then also knocking off Carney Catholic, 41-17. O'Neill's Wins were impressive, and especially that one in the quarters over Aquinas Catholic 15 12. That should tell you all you need to know about these Blue Jays. And then O'Neill beat Boys Town as well 27 to 13. Let's go back to Rich. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats to honor America. And please welcome. The Oakland Craig High School mixed octet, including Shonda Wuhan, Carter Anderson, Spencer Anderson, Shannon Pilly, Andrea Werner, Daniel Sheckler, Connor Mockenhop, and Danny Meyer. And the direction of Mr. Alex Heffling as they sing our national anthem. That's the mixed octet from Oakland Craig with our national anthem. When we come back, we'll have the C1 state title between Bishop Newman and O'Neill right here on NET Sports.
Constellation believes in developing the next generation of Nebraska leaders. And we show that support by contributing to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. More than $120,000 over the past four years. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. School's almost over. What's next? I mean, what are my choices? I want to find something I love. So I can make a life for myself. And then I can give back. So, how do I get there? Take the next step with Education Quest College Planning Services by visiting educationquest.org. Participating in Nebraska high school activities has taught me about teamwork. I've learned how to lead among my peers. At my high school, I have set goals and I work hard to accomplish them. I like to run on my cross country team. It makes me feel good about myself. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities in our 303 high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. not just on the good days, not just on the challenging ones, not just during business hours, or when relaxing, but always. For the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Title on the line here in Class C2. We've got a decent afternoon here for football. 47 degrees. Feels like 43, just that east breeze at about nine miles an hour. Overcast skies, but overall not a bad day in late November for football. Chris Erickson is the referee and the rest of his crew who will be calling the game today in this Class C1 state championship. It's all ready to go. It was the O'Neill Eagles winning the toss. They have elected to defer, so the Cavaliers will be receiving it, kicking deep for the Eagles is Wyatt Lever, Wyatt Lever number eight, back deep. Jackson Simons, number nine, and Ryan Daly, number one. This will be taken, bobbled at about the 12-yard line, taken by Simons. Simons along that far side, out past the 30 to about the 32-yard line. First opportunity to take a look at this Bishop Newman Cavaliers offense. Led by Noah Vedrill, an outstanding quarterback. There is Tim Turman. He is the grandfather of Noah Vedrill, 36 years on the sidelines for the Cavaliers. And a terrific record for Tim Turman, 266 and 115. There is Noah Vedrill, 6'2", 185 senior, thrown for 1,800 yards this year. Primary receiver is Reed Jurgensmeyer. They'll operate out of the shotgun to start, and Vedrill will keep. Nice gain on first down for Noah Vedrill after the 40. Impact players for both teams here while the Cavaliers have the football. Reed Jurgensmeyer talked about him. 43 catches, 800 plus yards, 10 touchdowns. And Trevin Rezach, 139 carries, better than 1,000 yards for the fullback, Trevin Rezach. Yeah, between Rezach and Lilly, they've got a nice little one two punch. And they both will flank Vedral that make them awful dangerous on the ground. Vedral. Gives it to like Rezach, who has it up for the first down. Just a football player right there. Maybe not the biggest, not the fastest. Yeah. Well built, plays low to the ground, constantly moving forward. It's a heavy runner. Oh, Thomas Lilly in the backfield along with Rezach and Vedral. Mesh point, Red, Vedral pulls it out and keeps it. He's hit hard. Good support from that linebacker spot by Jake Young. 140 tackles on the year for number nine. Yeah. 
down the field to Sean Callahan. Guys, it was interesting. I had a chance to listen in on the uh, Wahoo Bishop Newman locker room here. And first, Tim Turman gave his uh, talk to the players. Very stoic, kind of a Tom Osborne-esque type of guy. But then Mike Vedrill had his shot. And it was maybe one of the most passionate, best pregame speeches I've ever heard in a locker room. And, you know, Mike even brought his own music to match the speech. Uh, when he got done, uh, a Metallica song started blaring on the speakers as the garage doors open and the players are fired up and they made their way out here onto the field of Memorial Stadium. And so far, it looks like uh, the pregame talks have gotten these guys ready to go. I think they brought the lights and the smoke as well. <laughs> yeah. the There's our one of our impact players of the game, Jurgenmeister. Jurgenmeister on the catch right there, splitting the seam on a little skinny post. Long and lean. Great hands. 29 yard gain on the reception by Jurgensmeyer. Rolling to his left is Federal. He'll pull it down. Meets three behind the line of scrimmage and he'll be taken down. Jake Young, 6'1, 175 pounds, senior. Separated his shoulder earlier this year. He really has played through some pain and you can see that kind of big brace that he has on that shoulder. There's a look at Brock Eichelberger. He's the head coach at O'Neill, was previously. Uh, the head coach at Ewing when Ewing won state championships. He's accustomed to winning. There's no question about that. Brings some good pedigree to O'Neill. Won the D2 title in 2008 when he was with Ewing. So it brings up second down and 10. Bedro looks to the air. Out in the flat. Wide open out there. Good grab and a catch. Down that far sideline by Pete Burke. Burke with the first down. A little confusion there. Ran a little pick route. Both defensive backs went with the number two receiver, left him out there on the open. One of the things that impresses That's me about, early. about Tim Turman, I know he has sons who are, you know, in the business and coaches, but Tim Turman, his offense evolves with yeah. the times. You, you, you it's have, changed quite a bit. You're quite right. a bit. And you haven't seen him be stuck in any type of, you know, double wing or wishbone or you know old eye I mean, it does evolve into the concepts that are working today yeah and he wouldn't be afraid to get a lot of ideas from Seth who's the offensive coordinator at Miller Third West who's yeah. quite a creative mind and, and Matt in his own right a little bit more conventional you know the oldest Matt's a little more uh, what I would call conservative yeah uh, but all quality programs right I mean brings new meaning to all in the family Second down and five from the five yard line. Make it four. They can still get a first down here. Second down and four. The keeper there stays on his feet. Vedra leans forward in there for the touchdown. Great run by Noah Vedra. Yeah, just old school veer right there on the keep. Actually, that looked a little bit more like base. Yeah, just base it. Followed the fullback through. Great effort right there. And that's what he is. I mean, he's just a dynamic athlete. There's a reason he's got a couple Division One offers. Yeah. One in which he's already accepted and going to Central Florida and playing for Scott Frost. All right. So they'll go for two here. Federal drops back, looks to the corner, fires it over there, caught. Two point conversion's good. Reed Jurgensmeyer pulls it in. Wow, what a first opening drive for these Cavaliers of Bishop Newman. They go the distance. Vedral takes it in, and they lead it eight to nothing. smartphones we buy clothes we buy game consoles and TVs tickets to movies concerts and sporting events it's kind of funny we buy all these things to make us happy when really all we need is each other a place where we can all connect and get away for a while wouldn't that be nice Trying to be like a machine. 
Okay? Everything that we do is going to be the best that we've done it all year. 48 minutes. We haven't put 48 minutes together yet. All right? We've done three quarters here. We've done two quarters here. we got to put 48 minutes together in that. Okay? We ready to go? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's have a great game. Here we go. Brock Eichelberger talking to his team before the game, the O'Neill Eagles. They find themselves down 8-zip after the first possession to the Cavs, and now they'll get their opportunity back deep. There's Wyatt Lever to return, along with Kobe Todd. Pretty efficient drive right there from Newman. The one third down stayed on schedule. Showed you a little bit of versatility too. Two back gun, one back gun, little sprint out, little option. Trey Aarons to kick it deep for the Cavaliers. The ball blows off the tee. He's not too bad down there. About 10 miles an hour out of the east. Kind of a crosswind here at Memorial Stadium. This might be the driest of the three games that we're, we're uh, today. Is the rain supposed to come back tonight? Yeah. It was pouring for a while this morning. So here's the kick by Aarons. I'll be taking it about the 14. They fake the reverse. Has room up the middle. Out to midfield. Nice return by Kobe Todd. And Todd all the way out to the 47 yard line, 46 they'll mark it at. And that's where the Eagles will take over. A little fake reverse to start the game. And watching these guys on film, they've got a, in that, in being O'Neill, a lot of speed and versatility at the skill spot. Pretty impressed. You don't just go into the corral at Boys Town and come out of there with a victory the way that they did that's right. on the road. So Alex Tramer will start out at quarterback. He hands off to his fullback, Bailey Thompson. And Thompson, we talked about him off the top. 884 yards rushing. He's stopped in the hole by Bloom. Theo Bloom with 101 tackles on the year. That leads the Cavaliers. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a tackling machine. 30 shows up a lot. He flashes on film. And this one's interesting with the quarterbacks because Tramer, in his own right, uh, Coach Mimic called him the best quarterback that they'd seen all year. Wow. And yes... They had played against Noah Vedra. Wow. But Tramer with the quick toss out into the flat. Finds his running back, Jake Young. Young still on his feet. Into Cavalier territory. Near a first down. It'll bring up third down at about, we'll call it three yards to go. You'll probably hear that combination a lot today for yeah. those watching at home between Tramer and, and Young. Old reliable. A lot of versatility at the quarterback spot. Got good leadership. He's got a good arm, too. He spins it pretty well. And a, this is a big boy offense. They move fast, a lot of formations. Third down and three for the Eagles. Making the backfield, looks downfield and over the middle. Got a man pulled in for the first down. Still on his feet. Inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. So a conversion on third down for the Eagles and a big pass play. Let's go down to the field to... Uh, Sean Callahan. Guys, what's interesting about this O'Neill team is it was really almost a fight for respect the entire season. They weren't even in the preseason top 10. Uh, they were a team that really didn't get a lot of respect, but every single week they just kept winning and they kept winning and they kept winning. And, you know, uh, talking to the Newman coaches, they said they didn't really know a lot about this team because they weren't on the radar in the preseason. So uh, just one of those teams that really came together this year, and you're seeing why here on this opening drive. Big play there by Appleby on that first down, and then the carry up the middle by Shane Campbell, number 25. Campbell leans forward for a short gain of about three on first down. All right, so we've, we've seen some trips open. We've seen some split. Right there, they get underneath center and go power eye. Again, we're just seeing a, a, just a, some multifaceted offenses today, capable, capable of doing a lot of different things. Offset eye here. Take the give, rolls to his left is Tramer. And he will be taken down in the backfield of the play by Rezac, Trevin Rezac with the tackle. That'll bring up another third down, this time third and long for the Eagles. 
like the color rush uniforms. I do, I do. <laughs> this, this is sharp. 2016, man. It's all about rolling with the time. <laughs> That's right. Kramer back to throw under pressure. Steps around near tackle. Hits his man across the middle. That is going to be right at the line to gain, and it'll depend on a right foot, left foot spot here is very close to that 17. Here's a look at the impact players. Wyatt Lever, 33 catches, 560 yards for O'Neal. Alex Tramer, the quarterback. They'll go over 2,000 today. And Jackson Simons, or Bishop Newman, at that cornerback spot will have to help shut down these Eagle wide receivers. Yeah, and there's a bunch of them, and you saw right away what you're going to see from both quarterbacks: poise and presence. Yeah. Tramer in the Tramer in the pocket uh, kept his eyes up while he eluded the rush, able to put them in a fourth and extremely manageable, probably about six inches. Let's take a look when they set this down. It is literally right at that marker. Look at how close that is. So it will be fourth down, and the Eagles will go here inside the Cavalier 20. So first big play here early on, fourth down. Trailing eight zip. From the eye, Bailey Thompson at the fullback. Young and the sneak, and he'll sneak it in there for the first down. Down to the 15-yard line, that's enough to move the chains. I tell you, good job by the bigs up front. And that's going to be a good matchup. Newman pretty stout up front, allowing guys like Rizach and, and Bloom to be able to run. So O'Neill will have to match them up front. Good collection of kids. I really like their athleticism. A lot of wrestling, dual sport guys. You know the matchup that they faced each other in the finals in basketball. Right. The interesting one is Hallbeck and Welsh, Evan Welsh. Uh, battled for a state title, so they're familiar with each other on the mat as huh. well. They'll be scoring off against each other right across from each other. Nice completion across the middle. Great grab and a hands by Wyatt Lever. Lever, 34 receptions on the season. That'll take him near 600 yards on the year as well. It's a familiar name, Lever. It is. Dad played at the University of Nebraska. Good athletic genes. How about the hands? You saw the catch that he made a week ago in the playoffs. Right. Velcro. <laughs> da -na -na, da -na -na. It's all first down and goal for the Eagles. They'll give the up back and then shove him in there from behind. He gets down to about the half yard line, and that's where Thompson is stopped. They'll bring up second down and goal now for this Eagles offense. Boy, Thompson is a horse. You just look at that frame. Gets to where he's going in a hurry. A downhill tough guy. Expression doesn't change much. Always looks angry. Kind of his M.O. Said, who needs a birthday? Give me a win. You might be able to get both there, sir. Second down and goal. They'll go to Bailey again. That time he pushes near the goal line, and no, not in yet. Great job up front there. That's Nick Sedlicek getting underneath. Sedlacek getting underneath. Evan Welsh was also there to stack that up on second down. It'll be third down now and goal. There's that look. He's got that look as if to say, are you kidding me? Let's take a look at the replay here. Boy, that's a stout job by Bishop Newman. Nobody home. One more time, and they go. sneak it in on third down for the touchdown. And they're going to kick the extra point. And I like that call by Coach Eichelberger. You don't want to go chasing points, yep. right? Don't, don't change your game based on what Bishop Newman did. They're going to kick it and... Play the percentages. Wyatt, Wyatt Lever will kick the extra point. He's 31 of 42 on PATs this year. The holder is Alex Tramer. That's up and through. Wyatt Lever knocks it in, and O'Neill goes 11 plays on their first possession. One yard touchdown run on the sneak by Tramer. 
Let's take a look at last year's Class C1 State Championship Showdown. It was a back and forth slugfest in the 2015 Class C1 State Title Game featuring Columbus SCOTUS and Norfolk Catholic. The Shamrocks rolled out to an early 13-0 lead before seeing the Knights from Norfolk Catholic charge ahead 14-13, hoping to keep their undefeated season alive. SCOTUS would build a lead going into halftime, continuing to add points in the second half with a touchdown and two field goals, one a playoff record setter by Jake Bowes. The Knights didn't stop fighting, trading scores with the Shamrocks to bring the game within reach. But a late Norfolk Catholic fumble sealed the game, and Columbus SCOTUS would go on to claim the Class C-1 State Championship trophy. That was a great game last year between two quality programs, two quality teams, and we've got a, two quality programs here this year as well in Class C-1. Newman, which has been down here many times before, and O'Neill, which is making one of its first trips down here in a while. How about that answer, right? Forget about being awestruck. Anything you can do, we can do better, right? At least match. That's a heck of an answer. Especially, you know, when you're kind of the new kids on the block in this environment against a perennial power like Newman. It's a good answer, but you could tell they've got, uh, we talk about coaches and the teams taking on their demeanor. Uh, Coach Eichelberger takes a backseat to no one. His team doesn't either. Ryan Daly with some room to run. Look at Daly out past the 40 to the 45. Near midfield on a nice return by Ryan Daly. Now a couple of leaky starts to both kickoff coverages wow. here as both teams able to find some daylight in the kick return game. We'll take a look at the replay. Just a sideline return. The crease opens up nicely. I got to do a better job of hustling, right? I mean, you got to Got to stay in those running lanes, close those gaps down. Cavalier offense back in the field now, led by Noah Vedro. Vedro will keep it himself, follows his blocker into the hole. Great block, plenty of room there into Eagle territory, and that's enough for a first down and a 15-yard gain on first and 10. A yeah, really good job executing up front at the point of attack for Bishop Newman really occupying spaces and not so much men. I like how they're coming off and kind of stepping together in unison. With that 3-3-5, you'll get a lot of variations of where guys can line up, but it's still about good run fit discipline. Pedro under pressure, On throws run. it out into the flat. Nice move. Rezach still on his feet inside the 20 to the 10 down to the nine yard line. Rezach with a big game. We talked about him in the open. He's a downhill runner. Showed you some versatility here in catching the football in the screen game. Nice little diagram. Caught him playing some man to man. And they had numbers. He's got the convoy out front. Look at that. <laughs> Nothing but green real estate. He's a load for a guy that's built so low to the ground. Goal to go here on first down. Federal will keep right side. Got a dancer through down inside the five yard line. Good carry by Federal who avoided a potential big hit by Jake Young who came flying in there. Yeah, you'll notice he's in phenomenal shape. You see it a lot on the basketball court with him. Able to play 94 feet uh, in good football shape as well. And able to find the corner. A little bit of midline action. He takes it outside. He could have had a little follow me with the running back up inside, but fast enough to get to the edge. Gain of five on the last place. Second down and goal from the four. Give to Lilly. Pounds into the pile and Lilly a gain of about two, and that'll bring up third down. Thomas Lilly, the 5'10 senior eye back. Pretty good out and field tackle by Spencer Davis. It was he and Pater. Big third down right here. 
which defense can settle in first. Both, both look right. a little shaky in their first series. Third down and goal. Shut down in the backfield by Chance Shoals from that nose guard spot. Fought off the block and makes the play on Lilly. How about the run blitz though, right? Just timing the snap. And they come playing downhill. Good run action. Good job of getting off blocks. Can't be too sticky if you want to be a good interior lineman. Get the Velcro off you. So fourth down and goal. Cavs will go for it. It's big early. Set, make a statement here. Vedra will keep under pressures. Gets around the tackle. Looks into the back of the end zone. Throws. Touchdown. Vedral in the back of the end zone finds Pete Burke for the touchdown. Well, I tell you, when you come free on a blitz, you like to tell your defender stay to the quarterback's high shoulder to keep containment. It doesn't happen here. And watch Vedral shake free. And then once you get him out on the perimeter, he's truly dual threat. Look at him set his feet. Spends it nicely. Square the shoulders, young fella. How about that? Try that at home. A little side iron flip gets around the defender. A little 3D action for you <laughs> folks following NET. Well done by our camera crew. A little snap outside, leans in, got it. Good lean forward by Lilly, who was hit short of the end zone, but spun and leaned in to convert on the two point conversion. A little swinging gate action can be a little bit of a deflator there, too, because O'Neill was lined up correctly. Just didn't make the play. There's a look at the scoring drive. Six plays, 52 yards. Burke with that four-yard reception from Vedral. Interesting, too, because if you're O'Neill, you feel like you've played pretty well, and all of a sudden you find yourself down two scores. Let's get down on the field to Sean Callahan. Hey, guys, uh, you know, when you watch Noah Vedra, I think what jumps out about him is just his composure and management skills. And, and he's received a lot of high-level training. His father, Mike, has been sending him to places like Oklahoma, Kansas City, California, where he has worked with elite-level quarterback instructors, similar to what you see guys like Nebraska's current quarterback recruit, Tristan Jebian. And you can just see that. I mean, all the games we've watched, just the way he composes himself, his footwork, his management on the field, um, it, it's just a cut above your typical Nebraska high school quarterback and uh, just the way he handled that touchdown run there and that pass there at the end uh, that you just don't see that type of footwork and skill level very often here with quarterbacks around the state really good poise outside the pocket I like when guys when they shake free and they're evasive or elusive like that that they keep their eyes up he's such a competitor too yeah. all We'll find a lot of guys on the hardwood that'll tell you the same thing. He competes. Already Bedroll with 110 total yards. So here are the Eagles on the return. Still on his feet is Heiser, Bryce Heiser. A little back and forth setting up his blockers, allowing them to do the work in front of him. He gets it back to about the 41-yard line, so a nice return for Bryzer on the short kick. You have to shore up the special teams here. They've been a factor in terms of field position with each kickoff all three yep. have had impact make that the fourth so Tramer back out there now for the Eagles manage the drive the first time to go the length of the field and score the touchdown no running room there for Bailey Thompson as Welsh was there along with said but Evan Welsh led the way they got to find a way to get the double deuce going he's kind of He's kind of the backbone of this offense. What what he does in the interior allows them to get on the edge and be really dynamic with those wideouts. 12 minutes gone here in this C1 State Championship. Second quarter coming up. Newman on top, 16-7. When you've been around for more than a century, you understand the power of generations the value of nurturing and developing those who will carry on the legacy of agriculture and food production. That's why the Aurora Cooperative helps young people gain the experience, expertise, and wisdom to feed the world, be good stewards, become responsible community leaders, and continue setting the example for the generations that follow. The Aurora Cooperative, growing opportunities. Whether it's spring planting, 
fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state. Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. Speed here in there for the touchdown, and then back comes O'Neill. Nice completion there by Kramer. And now we're back live here. Gain of five yards. Well, that's a really good recovery by Bishop Newman. Shows you how well they can run. That was a that's a well drawn up play, right? The little RPO. Yeah. Make the inside run. He's got the number two that runs the bubble. Looked like he had a lot of real estate and closed off in a hurry. Could have been a much bigger game. RPO makes its appearance at the high school level as well. Third down. Fake toss under pressure gets away fires near the sideline. And a first down. How about the quarterback play? <laughs> you got, yeah. you got two guys that are playing at a high level. Watch the footwork. Eyes up, understands down and distance, and he squares the shoulders as well. And just enough Dijon to slip yeah. that one in there. Bloom was right there, had an opportunity. Nice grab by Thompson. So first and 10 at the 45-yard line of the Cavaliers. Inside give to Jake Young. Spins for maybe a gain of a yard. They got Bloom some with the tackle. Matchups going on down in the trenches with Welsh and, and Hallbeck. Tell you, Regan and Fritz. Some bodies being thrown around up there. A great year for the Eagles offensively. They set a single game team record for total offensive yards, a season record for total yards offensively. Under pressure, looking down the field. Got his man. Caught, pulled in by Wyatt Lever. I'm telling you. Well, Wyatt went and got that, didn't he? Yeah, Lever can, yeah, and he can go <laughs> get it. You know, just Google Wyatt Lever playoff catch and uh -huh. knock yourself out. But how about the delivery here from Tramer? on the run ah. the only place his guy can get it lays it in what a terrific Boy, throw. deft <laughs> those of you at home probably call that touch <laughs> i see a three ball seven of seven for 93 yards we're seeing some good quarterback play better than good a little high on the throw there to lever we had bedroom closing in from inside out too Probably kept him safe. No, it was making a bead. Yeah. Hard to believe that play card is folded that small. <laughs> Looks like one of those menus that like the Cheesecake Factory, right? A whole lot of a lot. But you didn't eat at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, I got a friend. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what I heard. There's a look at the total yards. Newman at 120, 99. In the round. That's not going to go anywhere. Did not fool Bloom at all, who was there to shut it down. And then from the inside, after Bloom turned it in, Rezach there to complete the tackle. Yeah, see, that's like being at the pizza place and ordering a burger, right? You just got to stay on script if you're O'Neill. Fancy down here in the red zone cost you. That's got you looking at third and long, which for your offense, it's all relative. But by play design, you've made it tough on yourself. So trips to the left now. Third down and 12 for the Eagles. And a flag, and it looks like we have movement on the right side of the line, and that's going to be a five-yard penalty and back up O'Neal. And that's Hallbeck. Another one of those tough guys. Heck of a wrestler. Good ball. 
False start. Offense. Third down. It's a little bit self-inflicted right now if you're O'Neal. You just got you got to dust yourself off, shake it loose, keep playing. You're in a nice offensive rhythm there. So third down and 18. Got him. Double move had him nearly picked off. Yeah, underthrown. That was a nice route. He had a man right in his face when Tramer got rid of it. There was somebody right there providing pressure. Could not really get all of it on it. Watch one more time. Yeah, corner squatted. Got help over the top from the safety. That's a window throw. You've got to get it over his head down the sideline. You see there's nobody back there. You throw that to the back pylon and give yourself a chance. That was Theo Bloom with all of that pressure. All of a sudden you find yourself, you had it first in goal or first down from the 14. Now you find yourself fourth in goal from the 22. Reverse pass looking downfield. He'll get rid of it. Got a man out there. He it's caught it. it. Wow, touchdown. Went up and got it and pulled it in. Jake Young. Yeah, he's that guy. We talked about him early being a favorite target of Tramer. And look at him go make a play. See, that's what playmakers do. That's where you get the name from, right? Playmakers make plays. Gave him a catchable ball. Wasn't pretty. But when you high point it and you can play it in the air, you give yourself a chance to make plays. Wow, defender was right there. And Young just won the battle for the ball. Kick is up and through, and it's 16-14. Each team has scored on both of the possessions. One more look. Double reverse. Fires it up. Wow. Go get it, young fella. Couldn't get a lot on it. He was open behind him. Yeah. And then it's underthrown. Comes back and makes the play. Boy, I tell you, they, they've got some circus. This is like wow. Ringling Brothers, Barnum, and Bailey. They've got some circus catches by this wide receiving core over the last three weeks. And how about this for clutch play, Damon? Three of the four touchdowns have been scored on fourth down. Yeah, that's, that's see, that's a high, that's, that's high caliber. They, they understand the moment. Pressure is something you put on yourself. And they're obviously not feeling it. This, these guys are out here making plays. Coverage of the 2016 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, the Nebraska Public Power District, the Aurora Cooperative, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and Constellation. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. Well, what a game here in Class C-1 to start this off. We're in the second quarter, and we've had enough action to last a game. 16-14, four possessions, four touchdowns, three of the touchdowns scored on fourth down. And what a job by Jake Young to go up and get that last ball. One of those 50-50 balls thrown up by Justin Appleby, and Jake Young pulled it in. Yeah, we talked about it in the in the opener. In a, in a stage like this, you need some breaks to go your way. You've got to make some plays on 50-50 balls like that, and they did. Jackson Simons with a nice return out past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 34. Simons did a good job of shaking that off. He, I know he thinks that's a play he should have made. He's elusive, too. You watch him in the open field. So time once again for the offense and Noah Vedral for the Cavaliers. Their third possession here of this first half. Previous two have gone seamlessly. Looked very impressive offensively. Federal gives it to Lilly. Lilly nowhere to roam. First man in there from that linebacker spot was Spencer Davis, number 28. Yeah, he's playing behind the line of scrimmage quite a bit, creeping down into the box. I tell you, Newman has yet to get the ground game really going outside of 
the quarterback run game. But they found some holes throwing the football. Look at these run fits. Just gap sound. Nice wrap up. Everybody for somebody. Bryce high team defense. Second down and ten. Oh, the Federal swings it out into the flat. Nice move. Churns the feet. That'll be enough for a first down all the way outside the 45 yard line and a good gain by Rezach. Yeah, nice concept there. They ran the double swing behind the curls. You put the number two defender in a bind. He sits on the curl, you throw the swing, and then you get Rezach in the open field. He's a handful. He's built closer to a C cell battery. He doesn't give you much to hit. Knees and elbows. Those knees constantly turning. It's not easy to grab those, right? And you have to have some courage, too. He's going downhill. Federal pulls it out and will throw it loud into the flat. Lilly with the grab and room to run. Lilly spin move down inside the 40 to about the 36 yard line. Another nice gain of 16 yards. I tell you that the, the playbook is fully open. What page are we on? 1920. Yeah. I mean, this well designed. Man, nobody home. Falling asleep on the run fake. Eighteen yards on that last gain, and Vedril will keep this time. Looking for the corner, he's got it. Vedril with another first down, down to the twenty, and it's taken three plays to move from about the 36 all the way down to the 21 yard line for this Newman offense. A prime example of why offensive coordinators never draw the stop when they're on the dry erase board. All their plays work. Vedril, your free defender on, he is the quarterback. He wins that matchup because he's a better athlete, able to get to the edge. Not poor defense, just can't match that young man's speed to the edge. Federal down to the 15 on first and 10. That'll bring up about second down and four here for the Cavs. Now we've seen 14 passes in this game total. Yeah. Uh, everybody scored on their possessions, but yet there's only six minutes and some change left in the second quarter. When <laughs> balls don't hit the ground, the clock keeps moving. This is some high efficient, high octane offense right now. Going to his right. Incomplete. Had a man across the middle. Nice job defensively. That was Davis again in coverage. He's been all over. Keep an eye on that young man. Again, Vedral outside the pocket. Tough throw. Yep. Back shoulder. Momentum going the other way. He is human. Right now, if you're O'Neill, you, you take a deep breath here. Understand it's third down. Find a way for your defense to get off the field here, or at least force a tough fourth down situation. Third down. In there for the touchdown. Rezach on the carry. Yeah, numbers game. Bedra playing quarterback holds the free safety in the middle of the field. They caught him in a little exit stunt. To the play side and Rezach, that's too easy for him. Look, body on a body, two guys in the same run fit. Not touched. Compromise there. You saw both Heiser and, and Campbell in the same run fit. That'll cost you. So two point try here upcoming. Opposite way, the flip and then the throw looking at the end zone. And no good. Two point try. Isn't this something? Wow. That's, that's like yep. me and you out at, at <laughs> Sandy Beach. <laughs> you give me the stick. No, you draw. Very, very creative offense this year. And now time for our NSAA championship trivia. Be the first person to email the correct answer to sports at netnebraska.org, and you'll win an NET Sports Championship t-shirt size extra large. 
Our trivia question is this. Who holds the overall record for most passing and rushing yards in a career? The first correct email to sports at netnebraska.org wins the NAT Sports Championship T-shirt. And remember, just one winner per household during the 2014 championships. Overall record for most passing and rushing yards in a career. You got an idea? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I have an idea. Oddly connected to this game <laughs> in a strange, <laughs> in a different kind of way, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. good call. Thank you. Yeah. Ve very nice. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> Smooth. There if, is. if they were listening to the earlier, yes, to the whole broadcast, then. Right. Well, who doesn't? Well, good point. Good point. This is like some morning radio show that people <laughs> tune into only when they're in their car. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. Duly noted. <laughs> Careful. I'm a moving target. Let's see if O'Neill can answer here. So booted away and out of bounds, so that will draw the flag and likely be re-kicked here. They might take the yardage. Take it at 35, yeah. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, I would probably take the yardage. I mean, 35, this offense. Yep, you're right. It's a good starting spot. This will be their, I, I believe, their worst starting, field, starting field position of the game. Uh, and you know what? If you're, on the kicking team. If you're O'Neal. The ball we placed at 35-yard line. Right hash. First down. You can't panic trying to get into this answer score for yeah. score. You, you got to do what you do and stay within yourself. Yep. Brock Eichelberger in his seventh season at O'Neill won that state championship we said earlier when he was at Ewing in class D2. Not much running room. Taken down after a short gain for Bailey Thompson. Yeah, outside of the the Rezach score, the handoff run game has kind of almost been for show for both these two teams. Quarterback run game has been good. The tailback run game, not so much. Let's go down to Sean. It's been an interesting strategy by Tim Turman going for two on all three touchdowns. Just talking to some people here on the uh, Newman sideline, they said Newman's really only gone for two about ten times all year. So their theory is uh, Coach Turman doesn't like these uh, smaller goalposts in the college stadium that his kickers usually aren't used to uh, compared to what they kick out of the normal high school stadiums. Ah, good point. These uh, goalposts are a bit skinnier, if you will. See, that's why we pay... Sean, Sean the, big yeah. bucks because right. I would not have thought of that because I'm curious myself because he's typically fairly buttoned up. You, you know, Tim, yeah. 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 Well, don't give Sean too much credit. He did say he talked to people on the sideline. It wasn't like it was his idea, right? Well, I mean, he had the. Uh, he's being proactive. Oh, okay. Well, he wanted to. <laughs> inquiring minds want to know. All right. All right. Good work, Sean. Nice job down there. Yeah. Trips to the left and will roll that way on third down. Under pressure, gets away. And not much you could do there. Last bit of pressure there provided by Theo Bloom, who took down Tramer. Yeah, you watch 30. He's the guy, he, he flashes on film. Talked about him earlier. And usually whatever he hits, stops moving. Really good player. Look at that closing speed. Yeah. Kept the hit legal. Gave it the little nod. Yes, I, I did a good job. Yeah, yes, you did, Mr. Bloom. <laughs> Tyler Reagan now to punt it away. Reagan with a good average this year. He's averaging 39 yards per punt, a long of 50. That kind of end over end. Tried to keep it low and out of the wind. That's where the Cavaliers will take over at about the 43-yard line. One thing that hasn't really come to fruition yet, when you watch O'Neal on tape, a very good tackling team in the open field. Tackling has just been so-so. Uh, listen, you, you give credit where credit is due. Bishop Newman has some phenomenal athletes out there on the edges. 
Hey, tonight on NET World, or tomorrow, I'm sorry, on NET World, Big Red Wrap Up moves to a special time due to the high school football championships, which are going on tonight. Our Andy Kendi in for Kevin Kugler, Blake Lawrence, Sean Callahan as they recap the Maryland game and look ahead to Friday's game against Iowa. Big Red Wrap Up is live on NET World tomorrow at 7. Well, look at him in the open field. Boy, nifty, nifty moves, nifty feet. Gain of nine yards on first down by Noah Vedrill. You're an old school Beastie Boys fan, which I know you are, Larry Putney. That is old school. He's crafty. <laughs> We're only in our second game today. We're already going with the show tunes. Well, you know. Listen, what would you expect? Right. right? I mean, fresh off a of tail kicking. <laughs> it's, it was the best I could do to be in a good mood today. Trips to the top of the screen for the Cavs. And I haven't mentioned that once, by the way. I appreciate it. Completely respectful. Thank you much. It was a great season, though. You have to admit that, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. We just, just not battle-tested enough when it came down to it. So when you say not battle-tested enough, you mean too many wins by big margins yeah, to just not play in just, the big moment? Just hadn't been there yeah. before with that type of adversity. And it showed up. It snowballed in a hurry. That uh, that's a good football team, not 42-6 better. Right. But they do have some weapons. Well coached up front. A couple of well coached teams here in Class C1 as Bishop Newman is trying to drive to extend its lead. Boy, good carry there on first down. A gain of seven yards by Rezach. Well, that's Check Lily. that. That's Lily. Yeah. He had that ball, two hands well, they, on it, wrapped up, looked a bit like his fullback. And they look a lot alike, yeah. carrying the football. It's Rezac leading the way for the other. And it was Thomas Lilly. You don't let the last name fool you, he's tough. <laughs> I like Zidlachik over there along the line. He's doing work. Snap bobbled and jumping on it is Vedral. Smart play by Vedral not to try to pick it up with the defender right there. Instead, that'll get him a bit off schedule here now. Third down and 12. That changes the dynamic a little bit as we look. That's a ball he's got to handle. You yeah. can see he's got his eyes up. He's, he's looking for Young to come on that blitz. But the one thing that got Newman off schedule with the chance for O'Neill to get a stop is a bad snap. Now, you can't allow them to break your back here. Third and long. And this type of defense, the 3-3-5, three, three, you've got to make it extremely difficult. He's been good on these downs. Rolls to his right, looks downfield. Flips it deep, got a man out there. Underthrown, incomplete. Yeah, they've had him wide open. Flooded the zone against too high. And when I say flooded, that means they sent one more than you have accounted for. They put you in a bind. The number two ran the corner. Number one ran the stop. We saw this route concept last night, except for us, it went for two scores. Yeah. Got to communicate back there in the secondary. Well, maybe the first bad throw of the afternoon for Noah Federal is that was a bit underthrown and also to the wrong side, but had him wide open out there. So now fourth and 12. Off the side of the foot, that's shanked a bit and out of bounds. So it will be. Eagles ball at the 28 yard line. Down by eight. All right, so you got, with this offense, I don't know about plenty of time, but enough time to generate points with 2.06 left on the clock. Tramer has been in a nice rhythm when you've stuck to kind of the roots of your offense. Now they've gone a little bit of trickeration as of late. Look to get him back with the five step and deliver as they try to find points here. Tramer over the middle incomplete. Well, he had him too. Yeah. Got to set his feet. See some guys running open here. At this level, at the high school level, with some of the intricacies of these passing offenses, makes it really hard on the secondary. This, some big boy stuff going on out here conceptually. Quarterbacks understand too high versus three high versus, you know, or three deep, excuse me. Folks are well trained. You heard Sean talk about 
Noah going a variety of camps. He's not the only one. Quarterbacks out here get a good tutelage. Second down and 10. That time over the middle got his man. Nice little jump stop there. Redirects, got the first down. Good run after the catch by Justin Appleby. Yeah, that's the team we saw, I saw on film. Very elusive. Their rack yards are at a, it's big, big volume. They run after the catch on this football team. And finding his blockers. And you can tell the receivers are used to working too. They're down there getting a hat on a hat. Up top again, this time out to midfield. Another nice gain on first down, enough for another first down into Cavalier territory. Now that's tough. They were playing man to man out there outside the numbers, got the little pick route. Number one ran the square in, number two ran the out, kind of a little rub route. Playing a two man game to the sidelines. Good grab there by Jake Young. Kramer back to throw again. Pressure rolls to his right hip keep. Trevor with some room. Good gain on first down, not afraid to pull it down and run. He has 340 yards rushing on the year. And that's going to be there now in that formation. You have safety help over the top to both sides, which means the middle is vacated. No one is really accounting for the quarterback. You saw the call coming in from Eichelberger. Check, check, check. Wanted to check off and did check to get the first down. Well, they've gone 40 yards in about a, less than a minute. 130 to go here before half. Hurry up offense from the shotgun. Under pressure, and he's dropped. And a timeout called by Eichelberger. A really good job on the pass rush. Um, you know, it, 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 Welsh just kind of being relentless. And Tramer ran out of time because if he looks back to his right, he's got a wide open receiver in front of his own bench heading down the sidelines. Really good job collapsing the pocket. pocket excuse me. Welsh is a guy with a real high motor. So 120 to go here before halftime. The timeout called by Coach Eichelberger. Both of these teams with two touchdowns. Check that three for Newman, two for O'Neill, but of each not scored on just one of their possessions. Hey, sports fans, NET is for you. We bring you more Nebraska high school sports than any other Nebraska network. For more information on dates, times, DVD sales, and available webcasts, you can visit NET Nebraska. Dot org. There you go, why not? <laughs> and also, you know, not only connect with us online, you can connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NET Sports. Like NET Sports and Big Red Wrap Up. Join in the conversation. Follow us on Twitter at Big Red Wrap Up. Continue the conversation of these high school championships. Hashtag NET Sports. All kinds of ways to connect with NET Sports. So here on second down and long, rolling to his right under pressure, slips the tackle, looks downfield, lofts it up there, got him in! Touchdown! That's too much. Got behind the defenders, found the end zone, and found his receiver, Jake Young. Now I know that doesn't make a lot of sense for those watching on television, but that's a backside drag from far number to near hash. Like, you got... That's one of those where you take a look at the quarterback play and you look at Tramer and you say, hey, job well done, young man. Like, that's good quarterback play. Just elusive. And his head's up. And how about the delivery wow. on the run? With somebody about ready to lay it into him. Watch this. It was right there. Could have really lit him up. He's come a long way. Wow. It, Young's got a knack, doesn't he? Wow. Doesn't look like much. But he makes plays. Very good after the catch, too. Extra point is through. It's a good thing they needed all two minutes and six seconds, right? <laughs> right. 
22 21 seven plays they go 73 yards in just 54 seconds and that touchdown toss to jake young young now with four catches 79 yards and two touchdowns and that 41 yarder yeah that's tough on a scramble drill you typically don't account for that backside guy you almost think he's too far from the play you're flowing with motion and all of a sudden the quarterback has enough savvy to find him well, Husker Volleyball will continue on NET Sports this Saturday as the Huskers take the court against Michigan. Watch live action from the Devaney Sports Center beginning at 7 Central on NET, Nebraska's home for sports. That's one, folks, you don't want to miss because Nebraska could be going after, on senior night, its first Big Ten title since 2011. And they are going to say goodbye to some outstanding seniors Justine Wong Arantes, twins Amber and Katie Rolfson. Should be a special night at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. I've seen the Rolfson twins for a long time, right down the road from me. And Wong Arantes, uh, record breaking. Yeah. Not Wong Arantes. Kind of the kind of the glue, right? That's There's right. a lot of flash and yep. power and dash, but uh, she became the all-time digs leader this year, surpassing. Caleb Banworth, who is the Olympian. Well, you uh, Not break, bad company to keep. Right? a record held by an Olympian. You're doing something right. Oh, the crease here, Putney. Boy, I, that Simons with the return nearly hit that. Had had that. Oh, yeah, that moment, bow is he? waiting to break. They're <laughs> yeah. going to have to shore that up at the half. Otherwise, you can't kick deep. Yeah. Here's a look at Vedril in his first half of play. He's been terrific and now has one minute, five seconds to try to navigate well, about 73 yards, see if they can score again. He scores there. What are the odds they take their foot off the gas here as we take a look at how just how dynamic he is? Wow, what a throw there. I think the, the odds are zero, right? Good job, Simons. There kept he goes. It. Nice job by Simons. Weathers the hit. I like his game. It's almost like, you know, you, you, you watch those wide receivers that don't appear to have any bones. He's got very, very loose hips, does Simons. He's hard to handle in the open field. That little sprint out curl concept is not an easy throw. I really like both of these offenses. It's far from elementary. Gain of 18 on that play. First down and 10 from the 45. Motioning out, going to his right is Bedrill. He looks downfield and he'll dump it off. Incomplete. So he was bobbling it. Well, I tell you, Jurgenmeiser would want that one back. He's he's too good a receiver for this. Just sit it down and squeeze it. He relaxed a little bit and got the bobble. But those are some deep routes. Jurgenmeiser broke his off at about 15. He had the vertical by number three and about a 20 yard corner by number two. They've got faith in his delivery. Wide right the bottom of your screen now is Theo Bloom. They'll look that way to Bloom who makes the grab. Bloom pushed out of bounds after a gain of eight. Long throw and good awareness by Broom. Bloom, excuse me. It's always cool to see those tough guys that bring all the wood on defense have the versatility and athleticism to come out and catch a few passes. Throw him a bone every now and again. <laughs> Does a lot of heavy lifting. Third down and two, 44 seconds to go before half. Vedra looked at the quick out, wasn't there, defended well, and then throws it away. A little late, you want him to deliver that on time. He had that first down. He probably liked that one over again. I think he had Burke sitting right down at the sticks. Didn't like the throwing window, pulled it down and just threw it away. We're closing in on potentially the first empty, empty trip for Bishop Newman of right. half. I believe they scored on every possession. All three. Now fourth and two is plenty manageable for these guys. 38 <laughs> seconds. And still three timeouts. 
Walker. Plenty of time. Fourth down and two. It's a tough set. Tough set against this defense where you have 20 personnel. So you have two backs in for Bishop Newman and Dead no ball. tight end. Ball start. Offense. Fourth down. Hard set to handle with an athletic quarterback because the edges are short with no tight end. And you still have to honor run game because you've right. got two backs, but you've got three wide receivers. Well, a false start will change things just a bit, and it does change things completely. Now they'll go back to punt. So big penalty there. Don't want to give a short field to this Eagle offense. Well, and you can't fall asleep here, too. There's a lot of room to the O'Neill boundary. Appleby pulls it in right at the 20 yard line and that's where they will take over with 32 seconds and two timeouts. Both of these teams have scored on every possession except for one. Now does anybody believe in sitting on the football right now? <laughs> I mean as long as long as there's some ticks on the clock you've got to think though coach Eichelberger will take this one into the half. You know you're at the right, 20 not favorable field position. Yep. You don't want to do anything silly. You like your team's offense. You can settle down on defense. Give up the middle and that see if we can get something big just in case. Otherwise we'll just kind of let it run out. Yeah, a lot of what we talked about this morning when I said for the this second game would be highly entertaining because I thought O'Neill's skill was better than a lot of people thought it was. Yeah. And they've answered. I mean, a two point, two, two point conversions are the difference, really. And if the Eagles don't try to pick up a first down here, the Cavs, they have enough timeouts to make them put it. So, yeah, you they just have took to a, be careful here. Just took a timeout there. So, still two timeouts left for the Cavaliers. And it'll bring up second down and seven. Hey, if you love watching Nebraska high school championships on NET, then we could certainly use your support your generous donation to NET helps us produce more than 200 hours of sports programming each year so show your support by joining the NET sports partners club at just ten dollars a month we'll send you an exclusive NET sports partners club fleece jacket the same one Damon is wearing right now absolutely to get your NET jacket call 800-634-6788 or visit netnebraska.org slash donate. A lot of high school championships brought to you across the entire state of Nebraska throughout the year right here on NET Sports, and we could not bring these to you without your help and your support. So please, if you're enjoying these championships, help us out by becoming a member of our Sports Partners Club. If there's anybody that's not left in 36 County, we need you guys to be a part of this. Absolutely. Good carry up the middle. And that'll bring up third down and about one or two. Third and short upcoming. I know you're chomping at the bit to ask me if I've been to Holt, but I haven't. <laughs> they didn't. That was enough yardage. The Terman will not take a timeout. And I, I haven't been to Holt either. Um, Atkinson? Well, I, I believe that's yeah. six County, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. No, no Rolodex. I got that on good authority. <laughs> So we go to halftime of this C1 championship, and what a first half this has been. Some terrific offense, some terrific athletes. Let's go down in the field. Sean is with Coach Eichelberger. Coach, uh, first half here, you guys, it's for this is a great football. What do you like about just the way your team has come out here on this stage and kind of gone blow for blow with Bishop Newman? You know, we're, we're proud of the, the not quit, finding a way to, to get some points on the board. It's not, not exactly the way we want it right now. Uh, we got to figure out in halftime uh, what to do to, to, to make some better plays on defense. We've let a lot of guys slip through our ground and uh, defense find a way to run the football as well. The going for two strategy, Bishop Newman did, did it three times. In your mind, how do you play that here in the second half if they continue to go that way? Uh, you got to make a play. I, th I thought twice we were there. Um, I thought we had should have had a quarterback sack the one time, and I thought we should have had a, a tackle on their, on their swinging gate. So it's coming down to us. We're in the right spot. We just got to make more plays on defense. Hey, Coach, best of luck here in the second half. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. All right, thanks very much, Sean. We're at halftime here of this Class C-1 state championship game. 22-21, Cavaliers on top at the break.
everyone's walking a path. And most paths are best walked together. Because when we travel together, our lives are livelier, our journey more enjoyable, and the places we'll discover will be simply spectacular. To be in a place like no other that unites you all in a state of wonder. Wouldn't that be nice? The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Coverage of the 2016 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, the Nebraska Public Power District, the Aurora Cooperative, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and Constellation. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. Championship game, it's Bishop Newman on top, 22 to 21 in a very well played first half of football. Joined now by NSAA Assistant Director Jennifer Schwartz, who handles volleyball championships for the NSAA. First of all, another terrific year of NSAA volleyball championships. How did it go for the crew? It went absolutely well. November 10th, 11th, and 12th, we hosted six classes here in Lincoln, and everything went pretty well. So. It seems like you're really settling in, too, at the Pinnacle Bank Arena and having all of those championships on Friday in the same location. Very helpful. Very helpful. We also use the Lincoln Public Schools on Thursday, and we're able to start the championship a little bit later in the afternoon, which helps um, get our teams into Lincoln and, and whatnot. But then it really is nice having everybody um, at the Pinnacle Bank Arena. And then we all move over to the Bob Devaney Sports Center right. on Saturday, which is really exciting. Great venue for these high school athletes. And, I, you know, we say this every year, Jennifer, but the, the quality and the level of play in the state of Nebraska in volleyball is really unlike any other sport that we have here in the state. And that even in the lower class levels, you're seeing very high level volleyball. Oh, we are. And, you know, I was talking to one of my uh, member of the media just recently last week. I think we take it for granted a little bit because we're so used to seeing such a high level in all six of our classes. But this championship was, was a little bit different. I know um, in Class C1 and C2, we had a different process for getting into the state championship. We took the 12 sub-district winners and then the next four wild cards and put them on a 16-team bracket. So they had a one-game play-in to get to the state championship. So it was the win to get in. So that, that one-game play-in really... I think helped the C1 and C2 uh, championship be that much more special. Well received by the coaches? I think so. You know, I haven't really had the opportunity to talk to those those coaches, but they implemented it. It went through our membership. I know Class D1 and D2 are looking to do something similar, so uh, we'll see what happens. So here are your NSA volleyball champs this year. Millard North won it in Class A and B. It was Scott Catholic. Concordia won in Class C1 for the first time in school history. Stanton picked it up in C2. Johnson Brock in D1 and Hampton in D2. So some new schools in there, which is always good to see. Speaking of new, I know you're about ready to go through a new bid process for the host venue. Tell me about that process. We are. We just finished our three-year contract with Lincoln, and so uh, communities that are interested in hosting need to get a hold of me. We have an RFP that is available, and on December 9th, they'll need to let us know if they're interested in presenting to our board of directors at their meeting on January 12th. So the future of state volleyball is maybe up in the air a little bit. 
Well, thanks very much, Jennifer. Appreciate you being with us. That's Jennifer Schwartz, the NSAA Assistant Director in charge of volleyball. We're at halftime of the Class C-1 state title game. It's a good battle here in Lincoln. Come back for second half action. When you're looking for Nebraska's stars of tomorrow, start with the young Nebraskans in 4-H and FFA. Over the past four years, Constellation has given more than $120,000 to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. By supporting 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's stars of tomorrow as well. Natural gas from Constellation. not just on the good days, not just on the challenging ones, not just during business hours, or when relaxing, but always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenues for schools and community services. Livestock enterprises also create jobs while contributing to existing businesses such as local banks and grocery stores. A thriving livestock industry helps maintain our current way of life, but also provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to raise awareness of the importance of animal agriculture to Nebraska. You're watching NET television. Live streaming for the NSAA High School Football Championships is also available at the NET website and on the free NET Nebraska app. Watch Nebraska Volleyball on NET Sports. Michigan versus Nebraska Huskers, Saturday, November 26th at 7 Central on NET. Back at Memorial Stadium, we are at halftime of the Class C-1 state championship game. Bishop Newman on top of O'Neill, 22 to 21. You know, we have outstanding prep athletes all across the state of Nebraska. Some who move on to the next level. One of those was Alicia Armstrong. And really, passion and determination defined the career of that former Nebraska softball player, Alicia Armstrong. Through a debilitating back injury, she lived out her dream of being a Husker with the unwavering support of her parents. All I know is I missed four games. Alicia Armstrong's parents attended more than 230 games while she played softball at Nebraska. Her dream to be a Husker started just 40 miles from campus in the small town of Beatrice, Nebraska. Ever since she was a little kid, she always said she was going to be a Husker. I really didn't know what sport I wanted to play in college, but I knew I wanted to play at Nebraska. And Coach Ravel called me on the phone one day, and that's when I knew that I wanted to play softball here. Hit sharply right over the shortstop's head, and Alicia Armstrong turns for two, and she will be in there with a stand-up double. So the hot hitting of Alicia Armstrong continues. I could see a look in her eye, it was almost like a switch would flip and I just knew she was going to make something magical happen. She just had that ability and not very many athletes, I don't care what sport it is, male or female, have that ability to just almost single-handedly go, just give me the ball or give me the bat, I'm going to make something happen. Before Alicia became a clutch player, number 21 had to make a quick transition, going from high school to starting shortstop at the University of Nebraska. It was definitely a whirlwind. I was completely just running everywhere, just like a chicken with its head cut off. I had no idea what was going on, but I just had to rely on my athletic ability to get me through the game. We were at our year-end meeting at, for freshman year. I said, what, what was the most surprising thing for you in your freshman year? And she said that I started and played every game. And I just laughed. I mean, you know, she was such an athlete. She found her way on the field. As a freshman, she made it look easy, topping the team charts in hitting and batting average and setting school records by fielding 258 total chances by a shortstop and contributing to 49 double plays. Hit sharply, double play ball possibility. Try to turn two, and they do. Six, four, three, double play. Following a record-setting season, she earned all Big Ten offensive and defensive honors. But in the offseason, before her sophomore campaign, Alicia suffered a back injury. 
and it changed her focus from accomplishments to one major obstacle. I had a hard time watching it every time she would slide. I just kind of hide my eyes and just pray that she caught up okay. She was never the kind of kid growing up that ever really complained about, you know, if she was injured or something, she was gonna play. Ever since I had my back problems and back surgery, I know that I'm not able to do as many reps as I want to. So at the beginning, it was really hard. For the next three seasons, Alicia had to play through the pain. But with the support from her family and the Huskers, it was a hurdle she had trained her whole life to overcome. I've definitely learned all the sacrifice and dedication from my parents, especially from my dad. In the 1970s, Alicia's dad, Bill Armstrong, was recruited by Bob Devaney to play football at Nebraska. But due to multiple injuries, he never had the chance to see the field. I think that's the other thing about this whole family. It goes back to Bill, you know, when he played football here and his career was cut short because of injuries. And I think that was another motivating factor for Alicia is that she was doing it for her dad. She wanted to finish out because he couldn't finish out with his knee injuries. And she knows to this day, I'd always say no blood, no foul. And that's kind of what she lived by. No blood, no foul, and, and she got to be tough. She was making plays that were pretty remarkable that by the time that she had finished, she, she couldn't jump and twist like that, but she still, she just grit, she was gritty and getting through it. The pain was a constant for Alicia over the next three years. But remarkably, that didn't stop her from starting in almost every game during that span. That's lined sharply back through the middle and Armstrong two for two. She was a two-time captain who proved herself as a big time player every game and her parents, Bill and Gina, were there to support her through all of it. Over Alicia's four-year career, Nebraska officially played 237 games. The Armstrongs were in the stands for all but four of those games. It was, it was fun, it was a sacrifice, but you know, we'd leave Thursday night after Gina got off school and go to the game, and a lot of times we wouldn't get back till Monday night. She'd teach Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, and then we'd hit the road again. It didn't matter where we were in the country, they were there. We just never gave it a second thought. We were just got all of our tickets lined up and we just went. We're 35 minutes away from the stadium here, which was great, and then going to all the different stadiums. I, th I know she appreciated, you know, when we were there all the time. I mean, just knowing I have the support there, whether it's a good game or a bad game, I know that. I always have familiar faces up there to greet me at the end of the game, and so it's a really good feeling. Life's too short that, you know, to if we would have waited and waited for a junior or senior year, like some people would say to us, oh, I can't believe you're going to everything. I have no regrets. I'm so glad we did that, and it's been an, just an unbelievable experience. Thank you for everything that they've sacrificed since I was four years old, I guess, to get me to this point. Just thank you. Through the ups and downs, the pain and game-winning plays, the Armstrong family experienced a four-year Nebraska softball career the only way they knew how, together. What a tremendous career for a tremendous former Nebraska prep athlete. And we're seeing all kinds of tremendous prep athletes here at halftime of this game. C1 Championship, Wahoo Newman O'Neill back on the field, ready to go for second half action. We'll have it when we come back to Memorial Stadium. For me, asking why is just getting started. It's more than an activity. It's me doing what I love. I'm not a stereotype. When I rewrite the rules, things get better. I know that all these experiences matter. These moments will help me become something more Little things always lead to something bigger. Do it. Track it. Earn it. What you're doing now will help you get scholarships later. Find resources from Education Quest at trackyoursuccess.org. Coverage of the 2016 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, the Nebraska Public Power District, the Aurora Cooperative, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and Constellation. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. 
We are back at Memorial Stadium. Let's just go downstairs and a chat with Tim Terman. Here's Sean Callahan. Thanks, guys. Coach Terman, uh, this is one of the more entertaining Class C1 championship games we've seen here in a while. Just your thoughts on this first half, what you liked about your team's performance, and, and kind of what they need to do to kind of finish the deal here in the second half. Well, you know, we played, we executed our offense really well, which we have done uh, the, the three playoff games before this. So Ask him about the two-point uh, conversions. That's, re that's really good. Now we just made a couple of coverage mistakes on defense, and if we can get those cleaned up and, and uh, you know, put a little more pressure on the quarterback, we might have a good chance here then. Uh, you guys scored three touchdowns. You went for two on all three. Kind of what's the strategy on the two-point calls? Uh, I know it wasn't something you guys did a ton of at times in the season like you're doing here today in the championship game. Yeah, we we, we felt we have a good play. You know, the pass to Jurgensmeyer was good, and then we thought we'd line up on our swing and gate, and if they gave us anything, we'd take it. If not, we'd kick it. And uh, the two times, you know, that we got one, and then we missed one, so. Well, Coach, best of luck here in the second half. Hopefully this uh, second half is as entertaining as this first half was. Well, I just hope so. We're right. All right, guys, back up to you in the booth. Thanks. <laughs> that is a uh, very confident and uh, statesmanlike head coach for the Bishop Newman Cavaliers, well-respected throughout the coaching community. So here, look at your halftime stats. And uh, you know, Total yards about the same, passing similar, first downs, time of possession. It's been an even game. Yeah, and it's reflected in the score, right? I mean, yeah. the two-point conversion is the difference. I, I kind of, with all the aerial attacks and, and the quick strikes we've seen, I, I actually think it'll be the team that settles in with their run game first that will take control of this one because you have to find a way to keep your opponent honest, to keep the your quarterback clean. And, you can do that with a running game. So we'll see whether it's Lilly or or uh, maybe, you know, Thompson, somebody that can control the, the ground game. So Trey Aarons to kick it off for the Cavaliers here to start this second half action. Back deep is Wyatt Lever, Kobe Todd for the Eagles. It's a 22-21 game, 24 minutes to go before a champ is crowned, and that angles near the end zone and through the end zone and a touchback a nice kick good job there by trey arns and here's a look at the scores through quarter and you see you know each team touched the ball four times and yeah, no shortage of points and now yeah. is this i'm, I'm kind of wiping my eyes is this the worst starting field position for o'neill it is the 20. yeah 35 was the previous <laughs> worst, right progress First down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Give up the middle, found a little crease, creep through there. Good carry out near uh, the 30 yard line on the carry by Jake Young. Yeah, good patience. Hey, nine has got some versatility to his game. A little bit of a Swiss Army knife. A can opener, need your nails clean. Right there, he's just whittling wood right there. Nice and patient, skinny through the hole. Does it all. Second down in less than a yard. This time they give to the fullback who's got some room. There's Thompson, Bailey Thompson out near midfield. Check that that's Shane Campbell who was playing the up back. 25, not 22. It's interesting. A little ominous foreshadowing, right? I'm asking yeah, for, how about for a team to establish some run game and two plays and We've got 30 yards gained for O'Neill. Ground game's going to be important. You're kind of settle this thing down. That time it's a give to Thompson, number 22. Thompson for a gain of six. He's a low, isn't he? Yeah. I, it kind of it looked like he had a little hitch in his giddy up. That might just be the way he walks. He's kind of one of those Henri guys, but he, he didn't appear to be moving full speed. I, I don't know if it's his quad, a groin. Yeah. Not a doctor, so I'll try not to play one in the booth. Fake to Jake Young over the middle, complete. Completion there. For another first down to the tight end, Bryce Heiser. Yeah, see what happens there. Nice concept right now by Coach Eichelberger. 
You soften them up in the interior with the run game. So what do you do? You play action. You hold both Bloom. Oh, that's that's well done. Yeah. You know, Bloom had to bite because they, you know, been giving up yards on the ground. It vacated the zone and just play catch. Well done. Back in the eye. Young at the top of it. They'll give it to him. He is hit in the backfield by both interior defenders. Said Lachek was there along with Evan Welsh. Yeah, said Lachek is a tough customer. Like him on the offensive side and the defensive side. We know about Welsh. No, Welsh, excuse me. Wrestler playing low to the ground. Big kid. What right now what Bishop Newman has to be leery of right now is the boot game. The action after the run action for Tramer has been there if they like to get him out on the edge. Loss of three brings up second down and 13. Trips to the top for the Eagles. He'll look that way. Quick toss out there. Cuts it back up field. Appleby spins inside the 25 down to the 24 yard line on the carry after the catch by Appleby. Real good physical nature out there on the edge, both blocking and getting off of blocks. This, you, there's no question, these are two well coached football teams. A lot of fundamentals going on right now inside of the aerial attack and the vaunted offensive schemes. Two quality coaches. There's one of them right there. We're well, doing, doing a nice job of calling a, a really good game. Yeah. Taking advantage of what they're getting and capitalizing on their success. Not much there, and he'll be dropped for no gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. Jurgensmeyer on the play. That long, rangy body does Jurgensmeyer. You know, he was flushed. The sling, the slinging of him down, boy, he's lucky. Those heads collided. Yeah. Everybody fortunate there. Fourth and five, though, this is doable. Well, three of our first four touchdowns were scored on fourth down. So here we go, fourth and five. I thought Newman, I bring pressure. They sit back, play zone. Tramer. Under pressure, rolls to his right. He's got room if he wants to run it. He does, has the edge. He'll get the first down. Tramer, nice carry on the first down. Yeah, I just would have had to have brought edge pressure. I just don't like him with any sort of time if I'm a Bishop Newman fan because he's proven, you know, he's pretty good under pressure. If we were tracking, you know, plays outside the pocket versus plays inside, he might be more adept outside, wow. outside the tackle area. He's dangerous out there, much like, much like Vedral. Well, that's a young looking and young man, isn't it? 6'3, 180, junior. <laughs> rare that Vedro's counterpart wouldn't have to take a back seat. You know, usually right. Vedro's the best quarterback, hands down, whenever he steps on the field. That's a great point. Jake Young leans forward. Good carry on first down. He'll pick up about four yards, maybe make it three yards, second down and seven now. We've seen some uh we've seen some balance here. And it's serving O'Neill well. See, you blink, and all of a sudden, after this snap, you'll be at the seven-minute mark. Right. Let's go down to Sean. Guys, you know, you're looking at both these quarterbacks, Tramer and Vedral. David City Aquine has played both of these teams, and uh, I know Ron Mimic told some people after the game that they actually thought that Tramer was the better of the two quarterbacks they faced when they faced off between Vedral and uh, Tramer here in the two games. Going to the end zone corner. Did he get it? No, they're going to say out at the one. Looked like he might have been in, but a terrific carry there by Tramer. Doesn't get the edge. Check that. That was that was Tramer. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like he's built like a drinking straw, right? Like he could hide behind a stop sign, but watch him go into contact here. Well, maybe it wasn't like I thought. That was more the push. Yeah, I take all of that back. <laughs> the sneak he's here to there. get over. No signal, there it is. Touchdown. Opening drive of the second half. The Eagles go 80 yards for the touchdown. Now that is impressive. Right? If 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 you're on a teeter-totter, you guys are right nice and balanced. We're about the same weight, right, LP? That was good balance right there for him. Yeah. 
run pass ratio the concept was good it's almost like a whole new sequence of passing plays for them predicated off of play action we'd seen a lot of gun work but very little underneath center with the run action extra point try is no good so that will leave it at a five point game and Newman can take the lead with the touchdown as you take a look at uh, Maybe get a replay here on the quarterback sneak. It doesn't take you long to do the math, Larry. You can keep your shoes on. A two-point conversion for Newman makes it a three-point right. game. So that's that's a big miss right there for O'Neill. Terrific drive for O'Neill. 80 yards. And they're back. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Eagles take the opening kickoff of the second half, go 80 yards and take the first lead of the game for the Eagles at 27-22. Chew up a lot of clock in the process, four minutes, 59 seconds off the clock. Nice drive there by the Eagles. So now Newman gets its opportunity here. Wyatt Lever to kick off deep as Simons and Daly. Simons has had a couple of terrific returns this one will be taken back by Daly he's got a crease Daly out past the 30 to the 35 yard line nice return by Ryan Daly Yeah, they're like instant replays you can tell they've got a good concept of the sideline return they get the two guys that almost act like pullers coming from the hash leading the way it's a uh, it's, it's it's well drawn up there if you're on the dry race board Cavaliers first opportunity here in half number two. Bedro back out there. On the option to the left, Bedro will keep. He'll be drugged down after a gain of six yards. Brings up second down and four for Noah Bedro. Bedro with over 1,800 yards through the air. 20 touchdowns on the year. He's a dynamic, isn't he? Yeah, University of Central Florida recruit. An old Wood River quarterback coming back to pull this kid out of the state. A nice relationship between Coach Frost and, and Vedro's dad. Right, life's kind of the impetus. He's he's something else in the open field, isn't he? Good completion. Slow to get up is Pete Burke. Ah, cramping up. Yeah. Make all those moves, you can get a cramp. <laughs> Bedro's like, forget it, get off the field. I play Metallica in pregame. <laughs> Don't have time for that Bro. cramping out here. I could just hear Brought my own it. light show and. It's my, old, machine. That's it's right. my old teammate. There's no way the elevator goes all the way to the top. <laughs> Midway through quarter number two. First down and ten from O'Neill territory. Vedro will keep. You, you can tell, right? Second half, the tempo has slowed down to some degree as we take a look at Coach Vedro. Boy, he is different. And leave it to him to have the Vikings gloves on. He sleeps and eats the Minnesota Vikings. Doesn't really match his coaching gear, but I guarantee you if I told him he couldn't care less, 
Did he hear about the four game losing streak? Yeah, but don't talk to him about that. He revs high. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. He revs really high. <laughs> Mike Zimmer fan. He's a good coach. Yeah. When he was hired, it was the best best NFL acquisition of that year. You know that uh, Mike Zimmer made a trip through Memorial Stadium back in the early 2000s when uh, Bill Callahan was hired. I thought you were going to add to one of the rumor mills. That wasn't a rumor. I was on campus at the time. <laughs> hey, Mike Zimmer's coming. <laughs> oh, no, no. He's, no. Got, he's, got, he's got cable. <laughs> Not now, yeah. They already ordered it. He's got satellite now. we will pass the cable. Well, I, like, I like Bloom out there, too. He's sure-handed. Tough guy. They try to put a body on him. He pushes, he pushes guys down. Just a little, just quick game, right? Three step, play catch. If they don't want to come see you, work the first down sticks. Pedro will keep. Right there to stop it is the middle linebacker, Jake Young. Jake's been playing with an injury almost all year. Had that separated shoulder, really played through it early on. And you see that brace on that yeah, left that shoulder and arm? Sully strap, that's going to be a hole. That's gonna, that was thrown by the side judge, which means that happened on the outside of the line. I, they're going to take that and back him up. Might have even been Holding a wide receiver. Offense, 10 yards into the run. First down. Been pretty impressed with our officiating crews. Well, thus far, both games been yeah. sharp on their game. Very nice job. Tim Turbin coaching his grandsons, both Noah and Eli. He has two other grandsons who are ball boys on this team, Ezra and Connor. Back to throw is Vedral. Pressure in his face, gets rid of it, had a man down there, picked off. Intercepted by Appleby. Yeah, big him. turnover for the Eagles. Stared him down a little bit too long. Corner fell off. Just took too long to develop a ball that he probably would love to have back. That's going to be a post possession foul on the run back or a personal foul. Holding on the run okay. back. So after the interception, uh, definitely post possession. One more look. Yeah, you just got to look him off. And it was a one man route, just wasn't going to be there. That's the deep hole safety coming over the top. That's yeah. how long the route took. Yeah. After the change of possession, holding on the defense, 10 yards from the end of the run. O'Neill's ball first down. He called him by name. How about that? No sense in miss Mincy. Nah, he's, whose possession it is. O'Neal's ball. He's right in the game. All right, now let's take, let's check. This is my body language check time. There's a bounce in the step of the folks in blue. Bishop Newman will have to show some resolve. There are the numbers for Appleby. Five tackles, three solo, and an interception. Done an eight. A great job on offense as well as he has five catches for 52 yards. Trying to get to that corner. Got it. Turns it up. Nice gain. Looking for a first down, and Bailey Thompson very near the first down. It looks like it might be about a half yard short. Yeah, we take a look at the replay here, and getting Thompson to the edge. Now, I, I'm a little insecure, so I'm going to use you now to validate me as an individual. What was the one thing that I talked about that a team needed to get going in here in the second half? Well, before the start of the second half, you said they if they don't get the throwing game going. Yeah, the throwing game. <laughs> That's the 10th carry for 68 yards this half for O'Neal after 17 carries for 18 yards wow. in the first half. That'll be enough for a first down. So they are ground and pounding it a little more. That's just it gets yeah. you just it got the sense it could change the course of this game who could ever start to run the football first. You know and, and Newman had the 88 yards at the half but it was so quarterback driven that you wanted some pure run game out of the handoff run game. Right. Oh, Coach Osborne called it the throwing game? Yeah. Okay. You know what he called the throwing game? The option. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm here all day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know. <laughs> I don't sound so happy. Short gain there. They'll bring up second down and long, so second and ten. Still can stay within kind of the context of their offense if you're O'Neill. You, you still get the sense they've got something up their sleeve. I don't think you like it at the 32 yard line, but they do have some versatility. Kramer back to pass. Under pressure, flips it out, complete first down. What a great job. Completion. He found Heiser, his tight end, for the first down. Yeah, just in a bind out there. You got the little choice route by the tight end, the little sit down route by the number one. Tramer buys time. Look at his poise. That's just a layered route. You have one drag and one out. It's not a difficult concept, but really good poise at the quarterback spot. That is an emotional and motivated sideline on the far side of the field here at Memorial Stadium. They're into it right now. Well, he doesn't look old enough to drink milk, does he? he said it's, that is a baby face Nelson right there. <laughs> like quite a ball player. Flag, that's going to come back. A hold right there on the edge will be called against the Eagles. Yeah, that's tough. They might get Thompson on the hold, and that's one of those where if he just keeps his hands in, I don't know if that was necessarily a grab. It was kind of a punch and an extension. Well, they had two lead blockers, too, didn't they? They looked like that was going to be dangerous. Yep. Yeah, see, I don't Holding. know about that. Offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. You know, he, 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 he placed his hand out there on Blum, and, you know, Blum is diving, so it looks as though he spun him down. I don't think he did. And Coach Eichelberger isn't happy about the call, but tough vantage point is he's kind of shielded. Watch you want to look at it. See that now it almost yeah. looks like you could be he, like he whipped him down but he didn't it was yeah. just a step hand, arm. Yeah. Our guys in the truck are on it. So that's costly first down and 20 now for the Eagles they'll go back to the air rolling to his right this is where he's been dangerous got a couple of blockers out in front he'll pick up the 10 yards for the penalty plus a few that'll bring up second down and about seven. Yeah, he's well over 70 percent outside the pocket. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no question. He, and he's accurate and they just continue to flood the zone. And again by flood one more receiver than you have defenders. Tramer now 14 of 18 over 200 yards through the air. 14 of 18. Well, I might be selling him yeah. short on 70% outside the pocket. He's only got four incompletions <laughs> right. as is. Yep. Ball on the ground, picks it up, rolls to his right. Look at this. Waits for the defender to come off him and then delivers it on target. What a throw by Tramer. It's the poise. I, wow. He's not even flustered. He's He's playing kickball at the snap. Not a problem. Scramble. Head up, head up, square my shoulders. Wow. Are you kidding well, me? And how about the catch? catch? Appleby. Wow. Uh, we, we saw Appleby had terrific hands and it's just a great job to get that one toe down yeah. for the first down. That was dine in and don't and carry out. And a hello says Theo Bloom. Boy, he delivers the boom from that. Linebacker spot read that the whole way. Yeah, he's the hit stick. He's that's our three on the old controller if you're playing at home. <laughs> All right, said usually whatever he hits stops moving. Snap it again. <laughs> There's no BB corn that guy. He is full. I mean, this looks like he's put together. Probably eats a weight or two, doesn't miss a meal. <laughs> Spits on his shoe. I mean, that's a football player. Loss of three on the play. To his left, out in the flat, nice grab. It's, it's got to be a fumble after the catch, I assume. Yep, it's a running motion. They say they will say it was complete. I'd like to take a look at O'Neill's conditioning program. Right, I mean, a lot of sprint out. 
You know, wide receivers, constant motion. Look at these linemen come out and pull. Good hands. Nice tackle, too. I mean, trying to go get the football. That's a good job by Pete Burke. So third down here from just outside the 40-yard line. Third and eight. Tramer on the pitch. Leads up into the hole. A gain of about three on the play. That'll bring up fourth down and four or five after the carry by Bailey Thompson. Yeah, attempting to overcome a first and what would have been a 22. You now find yourself in a fourth and five. So you go for it here? Well, I think they will. They feel yeah. good. I mean, they played catch for five yards since the game started. And I think they'll let this go to the fourth quarter. Yep. And talk about it a little bit. So the time ticks down on quarter number three, and it was O'Neill which scored the only touchdown of the third and took the lead here in this Class C-1 state championship game. Twelve minutes to go before we will crown a champ in what's been a terrific Class C-1 title game between the Eagles of O'Neill and the Cavs from Bishop Newman. We'll be back to Memorial Stadium. The Aurora Cooperative is reshaping the agricultural landscape through world-class agronomy, innovative grain marketing, energy, and animal nutrition. With the vision and financial strength to not just anticipate change, but create it. Driven by an unwavering commitment to the farmers and ranchers we serve, to their communities, and to the next generation of agricultural leaders. The Aurora Cooperative. Growing opportunities. At this moment, you might find us in a bucket truck. Or a substation troubleshooting while your power is out. You might find us moving conductor out to the job site. Or setting up an account as a new customer. Regardless of what we're doing, we enjoy serving you. You are our customer. We work for you, we're at your service, and... Always there. Always there. Always there when you need us. It's been that kind of game, back and forth, physical, terrific play, great quarterback play. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. One of the more interesting uh, stories on the Wahoo Newman sideline is number 73, Brandon Bruning. Uh, he was injured in a car accident last spring, and he actually was in a wheelchair for a couple of months, was not able to walk. Uh, has been able to go through uh, several months of extensive rehab. You see him on the sidelines. He was an all-state football player a year ago for Tim Terman, and he's fighting his way back. I talked to him in the locker before the game. It's obviously killing him that he can't play this football season, but he's very optimistic. Uh, he has said that he goes, I want to get back for basketball season, and, and yeah. he's a fighter, and uh, you know, it, it's hard to say if we'll see him on the court this uh, spring. He was a part of the state championship team uh, last year for these guys, but uh, quite a story of a young man that's really battled to get back out here tonight with his teammates. And they will punt it away. They'll play the field possession game on fourth down, and that will roll inside the 15, inside the five, uh, down to the uh, one-yard line and stopped right there. And that is where the Cavs will have the ball. That, my friends, is why they pay Coach Eichelberger the big bucks. He used, used all the time that he had, took the change in the fourth quarter, talked with his staff, and he looks like a genius. And you got guys raising the roof over there on the sidelines. I think that's what he yep. else did. What a great story there by Sean. And we we'll certainly wish him the best. I know that Brandon Bruning was he was continues a, to be an important part of this club. As you know, Coach said he's done everything he can to stay involved, and he's and a super athlete too. To be a leader, absolutely. Continue to be a leader. Well, they need a leader right now, deep in their own territory. Give it to the up back, not much there. Leans forward, gets enough room that they can navigate now on second down. Well, they were flirting with illegal, an illegal formation right there. Not sure they had seven on the line of scrimmage. It was close. 
you know, yeah, like, like we always used to do when you're back to you're backed up against the wall. What do you do? You get in trips open. Well, the last thing you want to do is have two or three penalties and then suddenly find yourself kicking off from Look five. 27 22 here second down and nine standing on the a in the end zone is Noah Vedra. wow it's spinning away from there out to the five fumble is out and it's recovered by the eagles yes they've got it well i'll tell you what it's it's a it's a if you're a bishop newman fan it's a difficult story brewing here for noah Vedra late he, he had the ill-advised throw on the interception. Then he's a competitor, a little careless with the football. And look at O'Neal just go after it, stripping, rip. Oh, good job. Just sticking his hand in there. Ball popped out. They fall on it, and it belongs to the Eagles. Uh, got a story brewing here. In wow. And that decision to punt looking even better for Coach Brock Eigelberger. First and ten. Grinding toward the end zone, keeping the feet moving and down. Far line judge comes in and points right at about the half yard line. Says down right here, but great job by Shane Campbell there just a pound away. They'll get right back into position and run this quickly. Tramer under center. They'll try the sneak. They'll push from behind. The big pile up. We've got a penalty. Somebody's got, is that illegal hands to the face? You can't get a hold in there, can you? Awful messy. Maybe illegal hands to the face or a face mask. Touchdown, personal foul against the Cavaliers. So after the touchdown, there was a personal foul. Might, might have been a face mask as he was leaning in. The touchdown is good. Personal foul, face mask, ah. defense. That penalty would be enforced on the kickoff. So it was a touchdown for the Eagles, and they extend that lead now to 33-22. Now's the time I think you go for two. Down by 11. Or up by 11. Uh, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I can't even do my own match. Right. Don't go for two. <laughs> Always saving my bacon. <laughs> Have our listeners or our, what, our viewers at home thinking, cow, who is that guy's math teacher? <laughs> but one of them is Dr. Did it make it through? No. Hit that side crossbar and out. So a 11 point advantage for the Eagles. Still a two score game. Just took them two plays to navigate those six yards off the turnover. That's two turnovers here in the second half by Newman. One on the interception and one on the fumble. Ah, and there you see the personal yeah. foul of hands getting up there in the face mask. Listen, at, the, at that point, I mean, you're just. Yeah. You're trying to build a wall defensively. And, but that young man has played a well of a game. The baby-faced assassin. <laughs> Just a junior. Right now, who brings a beach towel to a game in which it's 35 degrees? Is that a beach towel? I mean, I don't know where I'm from. On the east side of 108th, our towels are just white. <laughs> Oh, maybe a theme. He's got yeah. the shorts on. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just because they're such cool customers. There I don't you know. Go. There you go. He is in shorts. And then conversely. <laughs> right now, O'Neal is on a 19 to nothing run. And in that 19 0 1, they have outgained Newman 216 to 64. That's the ground game. Churn and burn. And Tramer making plays outside the pocket. All those fine folks in 36 County and the surrounding areas that have seen O'Neill play all year, they'll tell you the Tramer's been doing this since the season started. No surprise to them. I'll kick that through the end zone. The Cavs will take over at the 20. So an important drive here with 10.48 to go in the game, down by 11 for. The Bishop Newman Cavaliers. And plenty of time, especially with this offense. Yep, absolutely. 
Vedral just needs a crease. Highly skilled on the outside with, you know, you got Jackson Simmons. You can go to Pete Burke. You've got weapons. Jurgen Miser. Bedrill on the option. Pitches outside. Good gain on first down. That's a really nice concept. I watched them run that in warm-ups. It's, it's what we used to call 11 or 19 sprint, where it's just a sprint out. Quarterback deals. He's going to deal on the end man of the line of scrimmage. It's tough when you get in one back with two tight ends out of ace. That is old school in you right there. And Lilly with the eight yard gain brings up second down and a long one, maybe two. Give to the fullback. See, I'd feed him a little bit. He's tough in that interior. He's probably good for four every touch. He's a good football player. Rezach with the carry in the first down. Look at that look. I think he's not intense. You know, he understands. Rezach in the backfield along with. Go, 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 go. Out of the flat. Vedral completes it. That's a 20 yard throw. And he's going from. Uh, you know, just inside the far hash to the num outside the numbers. And he throws it effortlessly. So not panicking, very methodical here. Good gain on first down, brings up second down and two for Vedral. And this Cavalier offense. Rezac in the backfield with Vedral. They'll fake it to Rezac. Vedral will be just shy of the first down. A gain of one brings up third down and one. Actually, the more important of the two downs, you're probably thinking two down territory, yep. but you know if you don't get the fourth down, the game for all intents and purposes could be over, especially with your defense's inability to slow O'Neal down. Play of the game right now if, if you're Bishop Newman. Vedral goes from under center. Options. Got the first down. By about a half yard, he saw the crease, ducked it up, and got the first. Yeah, he was going to get vertical at the first sight of daylight. That is only the second third down conversion for the Cavaliers. Tim Turman sending in the play with Ryan Daly. His expression doesn't change much either. Nope. Now that guy, he's intense. <laughs> Trips left here at the bottom of the screen for the Cavaliers. Incomplete. Attempted to find Theo Bloom. I know there might be kind of the inkling to say, listen, they're in a 3-3-5. Why don't you just run the football? But very well coached O'Neal. They know, even though they they're only playing with three down linemen, they have versatility of those second level defenders. They know where to fit in the run game. It's not as easy as it looks, especially as soon as they get run action. Lily motions out, rolling to his left is Vedral. Nearly picked off. Oh, and it is. It is interception. That second interception. For Appleby. Great job of playing the quarterback's eyes. I, I know you're a Semisonic fan. <laughs> All right, that's closing time. Where you see him, watch him read the eyes of the quarterback. And then here comes the, you can already see him moving. Steps in front of the receiver, he jumps the route. That's what, easy. What that's, a play that's, by that's Appleby. too easy for wow. a good player as Appleby. He saw that coming. How about this Eagles squad? They have had a solid game here today and so calm and collected when the Cavaliers came out and took it down the field twice, hit two two-point conversions. And it's like I, I told you this morning, don't be surprised if O'Neal 
wins this football game. And I got a long way to go, but they were not they were not overwhelmed in the moment. A hey, trivia question tonight. Who holds the overall record for most passing and rushing yards in a career? The correct response was Scott Frost, the Wood River quarterback, 11,095 total career yards. Who knew that? How about Jeremy Jones of York, the coach of Thayer Central? Hey, coach, thanks very much. Appreciate you emailing in. Also wanted to send a quick shout out to his team, who is no doubt listening tonight, watching this C1 title game. So, Jerry, we appreciate you emailing in, and we'll send you out that extra large T-shirt. He didn't get any of those yards against him, did he? My, well, no. Well, might have. Yeah, could have, right? Yeah, a little flinch right there, left guard. So we said uh, kind of a remote connection to this game, of course. Good ball. Noah ball Vedral. Start. Offense. First down. Noah Vedral has been recruited by Scott Frost down to UCF and planning to attend. He's committed to UCF for next year. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. Guys, you, you look at what O'Neill's done this season in Class C1. It, it's just one of those classes where it's such a blue blood class where the same usual suspects are here. And O'Neill has really not been a part of that group for a long, long time. So I mean, it, it's really one of the better stories we've seen. This was a team that wasn't even in the preseason top 10. Wow. And they, they have gone just toe to toe here. And they're put on a show here. I mean, the, the talk of Tramer on the field, everyone keeps going, who is this guy? Where, where, how, what year is he? I mean, it, the, the show that this young kid, a junior, he's actually a Ewing uh, native. His brothers and uh, all went to Ewing. He's the first one in his family to go to O'Neill. Uh, and he, he's put on a show here. A lot of people are going to be talking about him after today. And we're going to have to keep paying Sean Callahan because <laughs> he's really right setting it. us up nicely because this is the second group of uh, kids that have come through O'Neill's youth football program, uh, which they've started, which has really helped them turn the corner which might explain some of that new arrival that Sean talked about. Right. Completion, not near a first down, and that will be enough for a first down. Good catch once again by Jake Young. He fit that right in a window, didn't he? Yeah, he did, and he's so accurate out there. And, he, and going back to kind of Sean's point about kind of the Blue Bloods and these being the new kids on the block, that feeder program numbers we talked about it in the opener. How about the accuracy right there? We talked about it in the opener, especially when you're into talking about smaller classes. It's That's how you feed the beast. And the more kids that are playing, the better that you can be. And with this being the second group that has come through the football, the youth football program, that's a big deal. 17 of 21. Nice afternoon for Mr. Tramer. 232 total yards. That's hands it off in the middle. Oh, yeah. Run some clock here late. Yeah, if you're O'Neill and you're Coach Eichelberger, you do not want the football back in the hands of one Noah veteran. And you blink, and he's putting points on the board in some capacity. That itty bitty play card, color coded. You're not fooling me, Coach. <laughs> A few things on there, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> a little room to run. Up the middle goes Young again. Young inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line, and that will be enough for another Eagle first down. And right now, they are just able to keep it on the ground and chew some clock. Yeah, it's it's been the ground game. Look at nice lead block. Nice crease for Young. About the offense's versatility. They've gone from throwing it around the yard to traditional handoff game. Yeah. Um, I formation. <laughs> Not much there as once again. It's one of Theo the better Bloom makes a play. One of the better players we've seen in the last day and a half. He's a complete football player. You talk about diagnosing. That's R3, wow. I'm telling you. There's zero forward progress. 85 yards in the half. 
And you still have five and some change to play for O'Neal. The difference, in my opinion, in the second half, outside of the turnovers, the turnovers are the obvious, but the ground game has been the difference for O'Neal's offense. Outside, good stiff arm, still on his feet is Shane Campbell, and Campbell with a nice gain. That'll set up a third down and about three or four on the carry by Campbell. Two teams very familiar with one another, right? A lot of the personnel, whether it's wrestling and basketball, we talked earlier about O'Neill losing to Bishop Newman in the finals in hoops. So there'll be no let's play basketball chance. <laughs> it's a good football team. Starting to see some missed tackles now. And conversely, O'Neill tackling better than they were in the first half. Right. On film, they were dynamic tackling in space. In the first half against Newman, you know, playmakers out in space, it's hard, it was hard for them to deal with, but they've made that adjustment. Well, if you'd like a DVD of these NSA high school football championships and the ability to relive these memories for years to come, just give us a call. 800-868-1868. 1995 plus shipping and handling. Or you can log on to netnebraska.org. Follow the prompts and you can order your copy of this year's state high school football championship. So here we are. Third down and four for the Eagles. We have a timeout called by the Eagles. Again, he huh. get the sense it's that crunch time. Yeah. Doesn't want to make any mistakes. Rather be safe than sorry. And there's no need for them to panic. They're playing with an 11 point lead and the ball. The clock is their friend, mistakes or not. Let's take a look at Alex Tramer, the junior quarterback, 6'3", great size, 180. Certainly he'll get a bit bigger, but boy, has he been outstanding here this afternoon. Yeah, just elusive and accurate. And poised. Yeah, so he doesn't necessarily even need a clean pocket, and that's a lot of what you look for right now. You know, at, at, yeah. at this particular juncture, there are a lot of quarterbacks that would love to be able to handle with of the pocket when it's a little dirty. So here it is, third down and four. Toss sweep outside, tries to get that corner, ducks it back up and has enough for the first down. Down to the 16-yard line on the carry, and that is a eagle first down, and now they can really start working on that clock. And that might have been a championship-winning first down right there. Cavaliers still with two timeouts, but down by 11. Means two scores behind. Give to Campbell. No gain there on the carry, maybe. Maybe a short gain of a couple. Yeah, feeding the beast. And correction, if I said f in the finals of hoops for O'Neill and Bishop Newman, ah. it was in the first round. Pardon my mistake. I thought you it's meant just. If I did say finals. I thought you just meant the state championship finals down here in Lincoln. Well, it's not the final game, right? Well, you never know how it's taken. I like to make sure I get it. All right. <laughs> Second down and eight. Time now ticks under four minutes. Boy, getting some good push there and push from behind as well as Campbell. Campbell's down inside the 10 yard line, down to the eight now. And it'll be second down and two. And a timeout called by the Cavaliers. The clock just continuing to tick. Tick, tick, you get a timeout, you got 344, you've got a third and two. If you're Bishop Newman, are you thinking sell out here yeah. in terms of stopping the run? My guess is you're gonna see some sort of toss. 
especially if they get an eye formation or any sort of two back run game I think you've got to sell out. Now they get in yep. gun and go one back eh? caution because you can't give up any scores here but two back run game underneath center you got to play downhill. Yep. Hey, what happens to the brain during a concussion is a medical mystery. NET Sports examines head injuries and UNL's advanced brain research in concussions heading for change. You can hear from athletes who've suffered and see what's being done to prevent them. Concussions heading for change can be seen online at netnebraska.org slash concussions and on the NET Nebraska app. An advanced brain study center here at University of Nebraska. And one of the one of the premier leaders in Absolutely. brain research right here at home. Third down and we'll call it two to go. Give it to the up back who's got the first down inside the five. Tough kid. Is that Thompson? That's Thompson. Yep. Would not be denied down there. This, he doesn't strike me as the type of kid that would appreciate you singing happy birthday to him. <laughs> but do you think they'll give you know, like he'll get a cake or maybe some cupcakes? I doubt it. <laughs> Guy probably eat a mud pie. He's all man down there. It's when the shadow looms pretty large right here in the backed up against your own end zone here if you're Newman. To find a way to see if you can create a turnover. Flag on the play. I think there was motion early, so offsides will be called here. Dead ball. Encroachment. Ah. Defense. Half a distance to the goal. First down. So there you have it the other way. You can hear him barking pretty good on that cadence. How about that. You like that seated quarterback like stance that. in there? See it sitting low to the ground. In absolutely no hurry here. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. Sean. Guys on the O'Neill sideline here. Uh, the coaches are saying, we got time, we got time. Well aware of this clock. I mean, you talk about management. They have really managed the clock on this drive like a championship drive would want to be managed. Good carry there down inside the one yard line. And now as it ticks down, probably don't have to snap this until near two minutes. Very close to getting in there on the carry by Campbell. And last time out of the game taken by Tim Terman. This is it right here. You're probably telling your team. The championship touchdown right here. It, right? it is. You, you know, you want to. These guys have got to sell out here emotionally and dig deep. Right now, defensive yeah. coordinator, you're talking about getting a turnover. If you're on O'Neill's sideline, you're talking about two hands over the football, secure the rock. This will be it'll be a dog fight down there trying to pry that thing loose. Hey, now's a good time to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. Just use that hashtag, hashtag NET Sports during the NSA High School Football Championships and let us know. How we're doing. We'd love to hear you, hear from you. So give us uh, a shout via email as well. So second down and goal. Give to Thompson in there for the touchdown. And O'Neill has just wrapped up. That school's first ever state championship. They did a good job of handling that that give. It's a quick hitter. Total of seven playoff appearances for O'Neill. They've been in the championship game twice, but not since 1982. Wow. 34 years ago was the last time the Eagles were in a state title game. They were runners up. You still had a comb in your back pocket in the 80s, didn't you? No, mullet. Yeah, I was wearing the Zuba pants. You and uh, Gundy. <laughs> this 
he still have that? Yes, he <laughs> told his kids he wasn't getting rid of it because they keep making fun of him. 1982, the year before I graduated. That's how old I am. Holy I know I'm not even kidding about you. That. That's scary, isn't it? Wearing it well. <laughs> Is that prune juice and antioxidants? <laughs> You said my Atlanta earlier. Really <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Ah, there we go. Hey, see, somebody hey, told him about having weird yeah. colors out there too. They sent the text down. Get yeah. rid of the beach towel. And Damon's making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> he switched it up. Hurry. Hey, NET Television's Nebraska Stories returns in January with a new season of stories from around Nebraska. Watch Nebraska Stories each week beginning Thursday, January 12th, 8 p.m. Central Time on NET. And if you've never caught that, you want to watch some terrific stories from across the entire state of Nebraska, sports-related stories, human interest stories, just great stories about great Nebraska folks on Nebraska Stories. You know these guys? I, I was reading my, uh, my notes from the crack statistician, letting me know that O'Neill has held Bishop Newman scoreless in the second half. But here's the thing, 57 total yards. Wow. That's pretty good defense. That That's pretty good defense. Now, the, the, tur the turnovers didn't help. That'll be taken at the 14-yard line. Stopped at about the 30, and the Cavaliers will try to add to those 57 second-half yards as they take the field. But how about the play of Mr. Appleby? Two interceptions, jumped the route on that one, read the eyes, great play there, and he's had a terrific game. And two big interceptions, and you tack on that turnover, the fumble, and it's really led to some key second half points and O'Neill's 39-22 advantage. Yeah, those are some good numbers right there. Four solos and two INTs to go with the other two assisted tackles. Yep. So Vedral's going to launch it downfield. He goes up top. Well covered out there. Good coverage by Wyatt Lever. They're trying to get it back in a hurry. Those are some deep routes. Look at Noah on the edge here. Good tight coverage out there. They're really playing deep right now as well. Not going to let anything beat them deep. Second down and 10 for the Cavs. Find themselves down by 17. Three scores down, incomplete. Oh, Got to squeeze that one. Eagles have scored the last 25 points. At one point, they trailed this game 22 to 14. Yeah. And, and again, you have to show a little bit of perseverance, don't you? You haven't yeah. been here before. And perennial power, the one seed is up on you early. They look, that offense was well oiled early. Yeah. Rolling to his right, looking downfield, finds a man, got enough for a first down. Completion out there to Thomas Lilly. Lilly gets the first. Clock will continue to roll at the spot of the ball. Get us right around the two minute mark. Good delivery right there. He's so quick to the edge from the quarterback spot. I mean, you blink and he's out of containment. Federal has that ball batted down. First time we've called Jason Halbeck's name. Halbeck. And I'm surprised. Yeah, 100 tackles on the year. Uh, he's, you know, yeah, great player. Great player. It flashed on film all over the place. 6'6. Six, six. First time we've called his name. He's just been going about his business quietly. A yeah, heck of a Very wrestler, too. Yeah. Boy, when dual sports are alive and well in your school, you probably are going to do well, especially in your smaller classes. Out of the flat to Simons, and Simons with the completion steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Another big boy long throw. 
He can make them all. Bring up second, make it third down, third down and one. Really brings in the play. It's been a rich tradition and history, too, for this Bishop Newman team. They were state champs in 1977, 2002, and 2003. It was back-to-back -back years when Coach Terman brought his teams down here and won titles. And a runner-up in 2007. They haven't been in a state championship game since 2007, so it's been a while for the Cavaliers, who put together a nice season, 11-1. and That only lost, the only blemish was that intra-city rival with Wahoo. Yeah, I'd like, that's one of those environments I'd love to be a part of, kind of like Pierce and North yeah. Catholic. And Wahoo and... Well, that place was packed. There were folks from all over the area that were there that night to watch what I believe at the time was a one versus two matchup. Keeper here, still on his feet. Nice carry by Vedral. Sprinting to the ball. No quit here. Look at this crease. Nice move right there. David, I mean, you have to be impressed with the high level of football that we're seeing here, given that, you know, the NSAA enrollment for Bishop Newman is really only 150 students. Yeah, it's, That's, it's an outstanding team right here. 9 through 12, I think they measured in your 9 through 12. That might only be the 10 through 12 count. Right, yeah, you might be right. Out of the flat. Oh, that's a heck of a tackle. Great tackle out there. <laughs> Grab by Bailey Thompson. That's with his strong hands Yeah, his there. team appreciates <laughs> it too. They're like, good job, birthday boy. Look, he's occupied. Sheds a defender. Oh no, that's a wow. That's a good. That's a tough man tackle. Bobbled goes deep, look into the end zone, tipped away by Appleby. Appleby steps in front, tips it away. Well, he's everywhere, isn't he? Yes, he is. It's almost like you think they're on every corner when you're looking for something to eat too. They're all over the place. <laughs> good athlete, plays the ball well. And when you play this type of defense and you've got to go hash to hash and number to number as a safety in this 3-3-5, Appleby runs really well. Giving you some of that too high look. Swings it over and incomplete. Had Rezac out there for the screen and had it set up well too. That'll bring up fourth down now, fourth and seven, and a final opportunity here for Vedral and the Cavs. Coming up later tonight, Tim Turman's son, Matt Turman, will be here. His scut team will take on Elkhorn South, the defending state champ, in a Class B title game. They were hoping to make it a great family affair today. Yeah, back to back. Rolls to his right, looks downfield, fires downfield, incomplete. There we go, change of possession, and again, a lot like we saw in this morning's game, of all the formations that we've seen, the next one that O'Neill gets in will be the best. Well, what do you think of this young quarterback here for the Eagles? Yeah, it's Alex Tramer, huh? He's going to be one to watch. For as much as intangibles as his tangible yeah. skills. So are we in victory formation? Looks like we are. Yep, maybe a couple of knees and we'll be done. Yeah, he's probably at least 15 to 20 years away from going facial here. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Heck of a player. Absolutely. What game he had today. Oh, that's some skills. Woo! Yeah, that, that's, that's the chilly that's, one. <laughs> that's not going to be good, but as happy as he is, he couldn't care less. That's a chilly one. They got him good. Woo!
Well, time ticks down here, and this will be the final kneel down of the game right here. Victory formation. And that will do it. For the first time in school history, the celebration begins in O'Neill. The Eagles are state champs. Congratulations, Brock Eichelberger. What an outstanding season. 13 and 0 and state title holders. They believed all along. There are a lot of people in that community sending me messages. Hey, we belong. We won't back down. We feel good. Got some buddies with some family there. You think those guys are want to get want to play out here someday? Yeah. That's where you start the culture of a program, right? Yeah, it's, it's you know we talked about it. Yeah. The, the second group through that youth football program that they started there, they play all around that area up there in the northeast, and that stuff matters. Exposure, repetition. You know, developing a toughness and then some camaraderie. These guys are, they appear to be really close oh. with one another. Well, it might be cold, but it probably feels awfully good. Eagles are state champs. You're watching NET television. Your favorite PBS shows, ready to watch when you are, anytime, any place. Find more ways to explore than ever before. Trying to train him to come and stop and hit his mark. Cats in space, I think that's a winning combination. The new season of Nebraska Stories begins January on NET. Hi, I'm John Knapp. NET is Nebraska's home for sports. From Husker Volleyball to high school championships, NET captures extraordinary moments and delivers them to you. In Nebraska, sports is more than a game, and your gift to NET can keep the action coming for future fans. And Willard North wins the state championship! For more information, call us or visit our website. The Oklahoma was going over very fast. Pearl Harbor reaches in the 20th century into the 21st century. The ability to identify remains has advanced, so there's a lot of hope for the families who lost loved ones. Wednesday night at 7 central on NET. Coverage of the 2016 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest, the Nebraska Public Power District, the Aurora Cooperative, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and Constellation. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. Well, if you'd like a DVD of today's game from the NSAA Soccer State Championships, I'm sorry, the Football State Championships, it's the other kind of soccer, right? Just call 800-868-1868 or visit Nebraska, netnebraska.org, 1995, plus shipping and handling. And you can relive all of the excitement from this year's state championships for years to come. Time now for the medal and trophy presentations, and for that, we go to Rich Broderson. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Executive Director, Dr. Jim Tenniper, NSAA Board of Directors, Dr. Bob Resnicek from Boys Town, Jay Beller from Battle Creek, and U.S. Bank Representative Jeff McEwen. Here are the awards for runner-up Bishop Newman High School. Head coach Tim Turman and his assistants will present the silver medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Ryan Daly. Number five, Brandon Bloom. 
Number seven, Eli Vedrol. Number eight, Pete Burke. Number nine, Jackson Simon. Number 10, Kalen Hospital. Number 11, Noah Bedroll. Number 14, John Matoka. Number 15, Gray Aaron. Number 16, Josh Treaty. Number 18, Jarrett Kamik. Number 19, Peyton Raybeck. Number 20, Trevin Rezach. Number 21, Zach Menna. Number 22, Thomas Lilly. Number 23, Tommy Benish. Number 24, Kyle Yelnick. Number 25, Reed Jergensmeyer. Number 26, Jerry Hageman. Number 27, David Lilly. Number 28, Cade Welsh. Number 30, Theo Bloom. Number 34, Connor Johnson. Number 41, Jake Unger. Number 42, Sam Kavan. Number 43, Patrick Taverdi. Number 47, Luke Fairbanks. Number 48, Blake Hannon. Number 50, Caleb Benish. Number 51, Briar Kims. Number 52, Morgan Moshik. Number 53, Hayden Johnson. Number 54, Nate Kanetsky. Number 55, Dalton Bartek. Number 57, Tanner Waita. Number 58, Nick Delacek. Number 60, Nathan Paisley. Number 61, Goal Waita. Number 62, Van Wattel. Number 66, Evan Welsh. Number 68, Sam Molly. Number 71, Noah Briley. Number 72, Andrew Clement. Number 73, Brandon Bruning. Number 74, Conrad Sander. Number 76, Bobby Hageman. Number 77, 
Jonathan Clement. Number 78, Austin Fessler. Number 79, Jacob Petrozelka. And number 86, Bray Miller. And now for these outstanding athletes and their school. Here is the 2016 NSAA Class C1 State Football Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Bishop Newman High School. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to the champions, O'Neill High School. <laughs> Head coach, Brock Eichelberger, we have a special award for you. Now, coach and your assistants, please present the gold medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Tanner Storjohn. Number three, Alex Kramer. Number four, Bryce Heiser. Number eight, Wyatt Lever. Number nine, Jake Young. Number 10, Justin Appleby. Number 11, Corbin Dean. Number 12, Matt Wilson. Number 13, Kobe Todd. Number 14, Francisco Perez. Number 15, Jason Alder. Number 17, Philip Schmitz. Number 19, Michael Posey. Number 21, Dawson Windsor. Number 22, Bailey Thompson. Number 25, Shane Campbell. Number 28, Spencer Davis. Number 30, Dennis Herrera. Number 31, Trevor Dinster. Number 32, Ty Hilker. Number 35, Colby Dean. Number 50, Chance Scholes. Number 51, Brandon Hobson. Number 52, Hayden Stroke. Number 54, Jason Hallbeck. Number 55, Derek Babutsky. 
number 56, Parker Belgum. Number 57, David Arroyo. Number 58, Garrett Lake. Number 60, Sean Gildersleeve. Number 62, Sam Karstens. Number 65, Dawson Jergensmeyer. Number 67, Tyler Rankin. Number 70, Riley Davis. Number 72, Nathaniel Seidick. Number 75, Hunter McClellan. Number 76, Devin Fritz. Number 78, Isaiah Shabram. Presenting the championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance, Chairman, President, and CEO, Mark Wall. for these outstanding athletes and their school. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the 2016 NSAA Class C-1 State Football Championship Trophy. Hey. Well, a very special championship for O'Neill. They are your Class C-1 State Champs. That first one always extremely special, and it would be a terrific place. In fact, we've got a few first-timers down here at State this year. It's always good to see some of these new schools popping in here, creating a culture around winning athletic programs, and that's a great win for O'Neill. Yeah, rolling their sleeves up, and a lot of people, whether it's been wrestling or soccer or basketball, and new schools on the on the rise, football here, a lot of it starts with youth programs yeah. and growing up together, learning the sport. Well done, O'Neill. Sean is down in the field with head coach Brock Eichelberger. All right, guys, we're with the victorious head coach Brock Eichelberger. You brought a state championship here to O'Neill. This is a, a team that's never won a state championship in the world. Just what went into it, what, and, and what are you going through right now, going through this moment? You know, I just, I just, I couldn't be more proud, more happy for these kids that have kind of laid it on the line since last year. They've, they've done nothing but everything we've asked. Worked hard in the off season. Uh, believed in the system. You know, came back after a, a 62 to 14 loss last year in the in the first round of the playoffs, and and just bought into everything we've done. I mean, we we have a lot of unselfish players, and uh, we got a lot of guys that can make plays, and and uh, I just couldn't be more proud for these guys right now. When did you know that this was a team that could do this here? Like, I mean, a lot of the the experts, so called, didn't even have you in the top 10 in the preseason, and here you are on the trophy up in Lincoln. You know, I think after that Norfolk Catholic game, uh, we got up 20 to zero, you know, and, and there was, you know, a little bit left in the fourth quarter. And, and uh, after we won that game, we, we figured that we could kind of make a run. We thought we were better than we than, than we were going to be. And, and uh, the kids have believed the whole time. I mean, when they set their goals at the start of the year, I mean, they were pretty lofty. They were district champs, state champs, 13 and 0. I mean, they had some good lofty goals and, and uh, they just they, they bought in. They bought in and, and uh, you know, I just couldn't be any more happy for him right now. Well, congratulations, Coach. It's going to be a fun drive back to O'Neill. Let's bring in some of these guys here. Alex Tramer, Jake Young, two standout players here. Uh, let's go first. You, Jake, uh, when you look at just how you guys played, when, when did you know that you guys were a team that could get in here to Lincoln and, and, and win a state championship? You know, I think right from the beginning, I mean, all of our team believed it and our coaches believed it and they told us to believe and we did. But I just think we had to prove some people wrong, like some people towards Lincoln area and just even some people in the community, they didn't believe in us and we just had to prove them wrong. You got a quarterback here. I, go, I want you to brag about your teammate here, but uh, I think the rest of the state of Nebraska saw what you guys have been seeing every week. This kid came in 26 touchdowns, no interceptions on the year before tonight and puts on another show for you guys to help lead the uh, the offense. Yeah, he's the best quarterback I've ever seen for a high school player by far. Even in practice, he doesn't throw an interception. Like, he's money every time, and that's just the way he is. He's, he puts in the time, and he does the work. 
Congratulations, Jay Alex, uh, what's this mean to you? You're only a junior. You come out here, you had a great season capped off with a state championship. It's incredible. I mean, first one in school history to bring it back to O'Neill. It's just incredible. I can't. This season, we got a bunch of, we have 41 guys on the roster. Everyone came in day in, day out, put work in. Even the JV guys, once their season was over, JV season. They came in, gave us great looks and scouts for four weeks, and they, they, they're Sharp just as much part as we are. We're just team, and we got it done. It's unbelievable. Where have you kind of developed as a quarterback? I mean, your skills, your footwork, everything, it seems really advanced for a guy, um, you know, in, in the outside the Omaha Lincoln area. You just don't see a lot of kids like yourself out, out there with the skill set. I mean, I just try to pride myself with technique and doing everything the right way, the little things the right way. And I mean, it just comes together once you get, you just, it's routine. Well, Alex, congratulations. It's going to be fun now. We're going to see you another year next yep. year. Hopefully we'll see you back here in Lincoln. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you in the booth. All right, wow. thanks, Sean, very much. That's a very uh, poised and uh, intelligent young man. Yeah, I'll take one of those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, did you hear some of those responses? Yeah, yeah, very well thought out, right? Uh, very thoughtful young Taking man. some self-inventory, well done. Yeah, outstanding. Well, congratulations to O'Neill. What an outstanding state championship win. They're heading back to Northeast Nebraska with the state trophy. I'm sure there's going to be a parade or two or something going on up there. There's got to be to celebrate this first ever state championship. And there they are, guys. They're the champs in Class C1.